All right. Good afternoon, good evening, and good night for some of you out there. This is another installment of Tales from the Head. We're coming at you uh, remote like usual here in our separate spots, but we're here together as one. Um, and that's all that matters. It is all that matters. Today, um, we got a theme today that we're going to jump into. Um, we'll get into that in a moment. Uh, I, I wanted to start with some, man, you know, just, I'd say how you doing, but we already know how we're doing. So let's just get into some random stuff that we're going to start with, which is the upcoming uh, Slipknot Festival in Iowa, which is, yeah. they've done this before, they're not fest, but they have never done it in their hometown exclusively um, mm -hmm. in Indianola, Iowa, which is 14 miles south of Des Moines. And um, yeah. the the lineup is is really good. I mean, for starters, you, you obviously got Slipknot headlining, you know, and then supporting act. I believe opening for them because they're they're the next biggest font, which is huge. I've mm -hmm. never seen this band live. They're San Francisco natives. Mike Patton is a beast. Faith No More, super epic. No pun intended, but um, yeah. dude. But I'm like, I don't even remember the last time they even played shows. I think they've done, like, festivals overseas and, like, Europe. But, I mean, Faith No More, man. Huge in the 90s. Oh, man. Super dope band. I mean, okay. People don't really know Faith No More. Here's another song they did. You ever seen the show Dirty Jobs? Their theme song is Faith No I More. Didn't. Well, I, I, I do know Faith No More from a super epic or epic. the Yeah, that song epic, but they, they do uh, We Care A Lot is the theme song for Dirty Jobs. Yo, it's mm -hmm. a dirty job, but someone's got... Dude, Mike Rowe, huge. So Mailbox yeah. Money from no, Discovery I, I... Channel. Um, yeah, no, he also does the voiceover for Deadliest Catch. Well, Mike Rowe? Yeah. Yeah, but Mike Patton, the lead singer of Faith No More also made the monster noises for uh, I Am Legend with Will Smith. He's a voice actor oh. as well. Yeah, he does. He's fucking dope. And I, I don't know if you're aware yeah. of his... You, you're aware of, like, Mr. Bungle and his weird side projects and yeah. stuff? Yeah. Yes, yes, I am. So he's, he's a I nut. Think Mr. I think Mr. Bungle was supposed to, or maybe they still are opening up for, I believe, either Rage or System of a Down. I can't remember, but they were... Um, on one of those like crazy lineups, also like makes sense, fucking, dude. Uh, LA Coliseum, I'm, re I'm pretty sure it's already sold out for like the next month or something. There's like a million people wait list for that shit. And then onto the list of other names, you have. I'm gonna make yeah. this one's gonna be a little shorter. You got Megadeth, awesome. You got Lamb of God, always amazing. I've never seen them put on a bad show. Um. Mm. You got two rap acts, which is going to be very fitting rap acts, but it will be interesting to see how many people are going for them or how many metalheads are just going to watch them play. I think it's going to be kind of a mixed bag, but mostly play metalheads watching this. Um, it is kind of a crossover genre, especially with Suicide Boys. Um, I believe mm -hmm. they're from New Orleans, or at least Louisiana, and yeah, they're pretty hard. They got some pretty hard stuff, man. Very fitting. Yeah, man, you were, you were showing me some of their stuff earlier today, and um, it is this that duel was definitely like dropping for us. Like, oh yeah, check out Suicide Boys, check out Suicide Boys, and of course, like, oh okay, yeah, sure, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's very similar to um to some of the music I've been listening to, and I've been kind of sharing with you also. So mm. very fitting with like the theme of of Knockfest. Yeah, cornfields um, and yeah. meth. <laughs> a little bit of crack here and there. Yeah. A little yeah. spoon for heating things up. Right. Um then we also got Gojira. Very Bakersfield. Yeah, well, dude. Yeah. Look, this is this is this is Bakersfield before Bakersfield. You know, so that's the thing yeah. like this is... even though technically corn came before for sure corn was before Slipknot. I'm just going to say creepy shit for sure, I feel like happened in Iowa before Bakersfield. So that's another reason why. And oh, spoiler alert, yeah. I'm going to go this year. Um, me and my buddy Michael decided, screw this. Let's live like white people that that that, <laughs> that fly around in jets 
and do what we want to fucking do. So now I'm doing it. Thank you, Mom. <laughs> I finally made it. I'm going to Iowa. Aren't you proud of me now, Mom? <laughs> so funny I'm when you tell people what you're going to do. Where are you going? Oh, Indianola. I'm going to go visit. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you know, I'm going to go visit exotic Iowa. Oh, yeah. shit, dude. And and so, yeah. and so I'll get I'll get through the rest of this lineup real quick. And then you got Trivium. And then I love Trivium, dude. Dude, me too. Like that song Rain. Yeah. Oh, it's a good one. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, dude, gunshot to the head. Was it Trepidation, I believe, is the name of the song? God. Yeah, it's but, just, I remember their debut album was just like, I remember I saw, them, I saw like a live performance of them. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, all that shit was just freaking amazing. I'm like, fuck, they're really good. Dude, so yeah. And, they just, and, they're, and they've gotten so much better also. They have. And, okay, so I kind of stepped off, but Michael t- was telling me, he's all, dude, the new Trivium records are solid. Really good. And then... Mm-hmm. Fun little factoid about Trivium, because when they were coming up, it was around early 2000s, pretty much. So Yeah, maybe three or five, 2003 or But, I mean, they were on the scene, I'd say 2000, 2001 already. Yeah. Because, dude, they were homies with Dimebag Daryl, man. When he passed away. Of course. (laughs) Matt Heafy, and I forgot the other guitarist's name, the white dude with long hair. um, Mm Mm-hmm. They both got Dimebag Razorbacks. So everyone that was homies with Dimebag, when he passed away, he gave them guitars. Like, they just, people got guitars. Oh, shit. Like, uh, Rob Flynn from Machine Head. Mm-hmm. Uh, all these guys, because they all knew Dime, and they were all homies and stuff. And it was funny when we actually ran into Rob Flynn at an Alice in Chains show, like, seven years ago. Dover, of course, is talking to him. Because Dover's mm-hmm. kind of like you. He, like, just sees people and knows who they are. And, like, we'll just start talking to them. And then, like, Rob Flynn was literally talking to him about how someone just jacked, uh, broke into his house and stole all his dime, all his guitars, his original Machine Head guitars, the dime bag guitar he had. Um, oh, shit. It's okay, though. About seven years later, justice was served, and a fan f- found it on eBay, and um, they, they flagged it, and he got all his shit back. Well, not all of his shit back, but he did get the dime guitar. I think he got one of the dime guitars back, and I think he got his original guitar back. But still, man, like... Oh, that's hella cool. People are shady. Yeah. Like, what are you stealing shit, man? And, and it must have been someone who knew what it was, too, because, you know, they were smart enough not to just list yeah. it anywhere, you know? So, anyway, not to yeah. be a Debbie Downer. Tech 9 is also going to be there. Um, that's huge. Yeah. I know there's a lot of people that have always yeah, been, and, I mean, he's the mosh pit rapper basically. Yeah. He's one of, he's one of the originals. And like I was telling Coop also like, um, he's done several times the, over the, I'm sorry, the after shack, uh, after shock, mm-hmm. um, to a uh, festival up here in, in NorCal. And yeah, you know, it's a lot of like metal acts and punk and rock and acts. And then there's always tech nine and he brings people. And I feel like he's one of the OGs also that yeah. been blending the, um, the genres together. It's just like ice cube, Cypress Hill, um, public enemy rage, even though rage is more of the rock version, but you know, I'm talking. No, about, it's like, kind of got that. It's got that. Genres. Yeah. I'm excited for that. Cause I've never seen tech nine live and yeah, that's I've heard cool. the pits are cool, so I'm like, what better place to have a pit than a metal festival? So this will be interesting. Of course, I kind of over, yeah. I kind of overshot this one, and I want to give them more credit because I feel like I've kind of been that way with them for their whole, my their whole existence since I've noticed them. Gojira, I don't feel like I ever give that band enough credit. Yeah, excuse me. Um, they're French. <laughs> like I'm just like they're French. No, but they're a French metal band. Um. They're named after Godzilla, and uh, dude, if you go into their newest record, they have a song called Amazonia, um, mm-hmm. the whole new record, killer songs, man. They're super, um, for those of you people that are environmentally conscious, the band is super environmentally conscious. Um, yeah. I don't, I don't, it's it's not a selling point for me. It's not not one, but I'm just kind of throwing that out there, and, uh, but musically. fun fact. Great music. And yeah, that a little Snapple top for you. No, and I actually got to see that band at a Knockfest tour back in 20, 2019, I want to say. Oh, okay. It was nice. um 
yeah, it was Slipknot and their supporting act was, dude, I mean, you know Slipknot puts on great tours because the opening band, you know, usually they put like up and coming bands or bands like, you know, you know, not a lot of people know. Mm-hmm. Their opening band was fucking um, Behemoth. Oh, yeah, huge. dude. They're hella Behemoth big. Behemoth is a huge band. I mean, they're not bigger than With, Slipknot like, in America. But, and... but dude, no. Yeah. Well, it's funny because Behemoth yeah. is consistently... One of those bands that I remember, they were. I felt like they were always on tours when we were in high school, and they would always consistently yeah. just be hella heavy, and always yeah. rock the corpse paint. So, like, dude, that is a dying oh, thing. One hundred. So, there's very few bands that rock the corpse paint and that can be consistently good. So, mm-hmm. these guys dude, aren't just lighting they, churches on fire. They're they're making records. They were saying how um, their, I guess, like, their luggage or whatever you call it, like, their whatever that was carrying, like, their <laughs> costumes and stuff that they wear. Yeah, their wardrobe. For, for um, Yeah, their wardrobe. Like, it got it got delayed. So the, the wardrobe couldn't make it on time for a show. So they went out there in their regular clothes without the corpse paint in any, in it or anything. They just went there, like, dressed like normal. And they still fucking rock the shit out. Oh, of, of course. What well, what I was just hoping you were broke. gonna say is they went to like Party City, and they just put together a bargain <laughs> version of Behemoth. No, <laughs> like, I, I think they respect the Behemoth or um, what's the singer's they, name? More integrity. Um, it's some weird name. He's got like three letter name. Yeah, three U's. Yeah, so, no, he's like Swedish or something. <laughs> Um, Nigel, I think it is. Yeah, it's not even that hard. It might be Nigel it's, or something. Probably the only know, normal whatever. name. The other yeah, guy's I'm name's pretty... like Bruce Stock. Yeah. <laughs> something with a K and like a that crazy under oath O. The, the umlaut. Know. Um, yeah, no, but they were. I think they have so much respect for their um for their own like art and their music that they won't they won't do the fan like that. Like go in fucking yeah. Party City or the dollar store and just. <laughs> bootleg freaking the bootleg their shit well they can't be great though it would be great it's just not fitting because not once has they have they ever been a a band that seems like they have a sense of humor and they probably are funny people yeah. but when the band's on stage it's yeah. just it's all business so yeah it's like they're, we're, we're here to do one thing and we're gonna do it the best we can well that's like what motorhead used to say we are motorhead and yeah. we're here to kick your fucking ass so that's yeah, the best way exactly. to start a set. Yeah. Um, how oh. rude of me to look over the no. five smaller. I, it's not nice to say smaller, but let's be honest, guys. Well, I, the tears dropping the, off. The, the lesser okay? known bands. Yeah. The lesser known. But they're, you know what? Just, they're going to break out. The, uh, the three, the, I see five of them and three out of five. You take like, over this I, section. I'm, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. you. You sound excited. Fever three. Fever three three three. I I was uh, lucky to see him at Aftershock. Also, the singer was the used to be the frontman for this band called Let Live, okay. um, which was a great post hardcore band. Um, so again, very similar to Let uh, Let Live, where it's like a blending of post hardcore with like conscious lyrics and stuff like that. Okay. Um, they have a guitar player from the Chariot also. So they're I mean, and the frontman. Um, is fucking insane. Wow, it's fucking insane. Um, and I'm... I believe their album was produced by Travis Barker, or I believe Travis Barker did their drums for them. So, um, if you listen to their um to their album, is there's some Travis Barker ish feelings to it? But okay, and then interesting. Yeah, so they're 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 sick. I I like them. I saw them put on one hell of a fucking show. The dudes jumping off like the PA system into like the drums and shit. So. Yeah, get ready for that. Um, Hell yeah. Knock Loose is just fucking one of my favorite hardcore bands right now. Um, uh, Again, they're from, I I forget where they're they're from, but they're a bunch of little kids. Well, not little kids, but they're younger cats keeping hardcore alive and it's just so angry, you know, music. So Knock Loose, I, I can never not talk about them. Great band. I highly... Um, their newest album that came out also in 2019 was called um, a Different Shade of Blue or like Darker Shade of Blue or something like something with blue um, mm-hmm. and great album. Just a great album if you're into like hardcore 
like early 2000 hardcore I, music like that's the type of music you'll dig i got a question regarding knock loose i've heard some of their stuff sure. would you put them in the same category as say a power trip power trip i feel like I they mean, were RIP, more like more yeah. thrash right power trip was a little more thrash yeah, they were more. I was considering it more with like manip, manip, oh, municipal waste, municipal waste. Okay. Yeah, um, with the more trash hardcore. Yeah. Um, where knock loose is just fucking hardcore, more straight and, like, up drop hardcore. drop B fucking tune. Yeah. Okay. Hell yeah. Straight up like in drop B and shit. Nice. Uh, same thing with turnstile. Turnstile is another more of the punk hardcore. It's the more faster, um, hardcore of um you know, of that spectrum. Like an old school. So it's funny because Fever 33, yeah. So Fever 33 is more of the, um, three, three, the three. post-hardcore, hardcore. Yeah, I'm sorry. Fever 333. Um, post-hardcore post kind of thing. Where uh, Knock Loose is like hardcore. Like tough guy hardcore. With like, 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 a, like more like a mad, yeah, like a heavier guy. mad ball kind of. Not mad ball, but I know what you mean. Yeah. It's like heavy. It's like super It definitely heavy. reminds me a lot of like it reminds me a lot of the Warriors, especially the way the singer, the earlier stuff that yes. the war, how the singer Marshall used to sing. Yes. Um, same way um, the singer of Knock Loose kind of sings with like shouting, but with like high pitched shouts or something. Yeah, kind of. I would say um, that's in the realm of, eh, would you say post hardcore? No, post hardcore is more screaming, more like guttural screaming. Yeah. This is more like, like you said, Warriors. So I, I guess what, what, what would that genre be? Just throw hardcore. down, kind of throw down ish, also as far as like beat down, yeah, hardcore. Um, but definitely but warrior know, style just, singing, I agree with that 100%. That's the first thing that yeah, popped in my head when I listened to Knock Loose. I was like, yeah, this sounds like the Warriors, kind of, yeah. Well, that's what introduced me to Knock Loose. I mean, I heard the name before, but they did a cover of, of a Warrior song, and I'm <laughs> like, oh, okay, and I heard okay. them, I'm like, shit, this sounds exactly like the Warriors, and then I'm like, oh my god, this band's amazing. I I'm going to punch a wall through. I'm going to punch a, a hole through my wall now because I'm angry. Again. I want you to punch a wall through something. I think that would be cooler. <laughs> I want to make a wall here with my um, fist. And yeah, turnstile. Now, and <laughs> this looks like a good place for a wall. Um, <laughs> and turnstile is just freaking awesome. I love like DC feel hardcore to him. Like, right. Very okay. like, like um, bad brainsy. Um, yeah, bad brainsy. Um, I wouldn't say like H2O, but no, definitely more like Bad Brains type of terms, um, hardcore. Maybe without the reggae. And then the other two, I just, yeah. no, definitely not the reggae mix, but, and then the other two, I have no idea who the hell, uh, gatekeepers are so, invented is. I'm just going to go on. Okay. Let's, let's do this fun thing where we got last two. And are you looking at the actual poster tour poster? Mm -hmm. You could see the font, right? So yeah, if you could it. just look at the font. How would you stereotype gatekeeper? Um, Norwegian death metal. I'm going to say that or some type of weird heavy thrash band because they also use that weird yeah. font too. But yeah, you're right. Either yeah. really, really heavy or... And then the name is just confusing because you're like, okay, the name's... To me, Gatekeeper, the name is totally death metal or stoner metal. Yeah, I was just gonna say I also I can I can also see him as a stoner as a stoner metal kind yeah. of very sluggish, very slow. And and I hope Vended is literally just a band that's vending machines. And I <laughs> <laughs> now Vended, <laughs> it looks um <laughs> that'd be so much cooler. I, I, yeah. I, I, I can't. I don't got nothing with yeah. them. They're just kind of like check them out. They're just there. We're just like check them out. So yeah, check them out. We're gonna check them out, especially Gatekeeper. And I want to know. Watch, they're like fucking amazing as band. I'm gonna start a band called Keymaster. It's just gonna go against Gatekeeper. No, it's just my there stupid Ghostbuster oh. joke. Um, I got you. I got you. <laughs> but I'm bringing it up because I. Uh, I've been I've been just in a funk lately, man, and like today's episode is kind of gonna go into that, but, um, mm -hmm. you know, life's short, and they're opening shit back up. Whether you believe that it's real or not, it doesn't matter. Things are happening, um, <laughs> 
And I just hit up Michael and I'm like, dude, let's go to Knotfest. Like, no bullshit. Let's go. We deserve this. He's had a rough yeah. year. I said, let's do it. Um, I got another big thing I want to go to too. I'm, I'm trying. I'm thinking oh, I want to try and go to this com- three day comedy fest in, in in Austin as well. Oh, nice. It's gonna be a little more. Nice. So I, I gotta I gotta see if if that AMC stock keeps going up. We'll see what happens, Danny. But um, <laughs> we're all praying for it. Fuck, dude. I literally got in on AMC as well, so I'm kind of happy about that. No bullshit. Um, but. I'm excited for this because I was talking to Steph about it and I said, you know, babe, I, I know. And that's the thing. She's not in a Slipknot. So like, it's kind of like a cool thing because I can literally, it's just our thing. Like, it's not like, oh, mm-hmm. she wants to go. And it's not that I wouldn't want her to go, but I'm kind of happy. I don't have to bring anyone that I don't, we need to worry about, especially since I'm going to a place I don't know. I'm going to be around a bunch of scary white people because yeah. Iowa breeds some fucking interesting people. And uh, we're gonna, we're gonna me and Michael are gonna see, you know. Um, if it's anything I've learned, and uh, and this is also going into this episode this week, is I I've been raised around a lot of culture in my life to the point where I say, you know, I don't feel like I'm white and all this shit, and people are like, yeah, whatever, you're just trying to fit in. But I get reminded of this very very harshly when I leave my area that I live in, and um, mm-hmm. it's it's truer than anything. You know, like, I look like a white person, but I don't know. I get, I get Trump, I get lumped in the category of all the other people that get treated like crap because, and I'll get into that in a second, but snotty, shitty white people treat me the same. So, um, I'm excited to see what it's like to see Slipknot in their element, as well as to just see a fucking, I mean, it's pretty much Wayne stock because as from what I, I, I need to look up more info about this venue, but I think they're building the stage it's literally going to be done at like a fairgrounds, 14 miles south of the Des Moines. There's nothing there. There's mm-hmm. one hotel that's five miles away. the The closest hotel is 10, 12 miles away. So there's, th- I mean, th- this is another reason why I'm excited. There's nothing out there. Yeah. So it's just going to be music. Yeah. God forbid, you know, we can take care of ourselves, and it's just me and Michael. So that, thank God. But it's going to be interesting, man. I, I don't know. You know, this is. Not only is this going to be our first show post COVID, post COVID, it's going to be a lot of people's show, and it's a festival, so mm-hmm. we're not yeah. in our neck of the woods. You know, we're going to be we're going to be cautious, um, but it it should be a lot of fun. And I'm of course going to do a video accompaniment with all of it. To hell yeah, dude! To one to catalog it because it's so cool to look back. But then it's just it'd be kind of cool to like, you know, keep everyone in the loop. While it's going down. So that's September you 25th. Seen, you've seen Slipknot before, right? Yeah, I've seen them a handful of times. Um, I just... The last time I saw them was when they did Iowa in its entirety, and I missed a couple songs that I wish I would have seen. Oh, yeah. um, but that was also for Michael's Bachelor Party in San Bernardino. They did the Ozfest Not Fest, which I think was mm-hmm. 2016. Yep. And that yeah. was that was super cool. Because that was mm-hmm. uh, Black Sabbath headline one night and Slipknot headline the other. Um, mm-hmm. Same kind of deal, though. It was, it was a lot of fun. So, yeah, no, I've seen them before. I, I saw them. I think the first time I saw Slipknot was about 2004. No, 2003. And then I saw them in 2004 at OzFest when their new record was Volume 3. So, And then I yeah. saw them most recently. I lied. I saw I saw Slipknot most recently at Shoreline when they played with Volbeat and uh, Gojira. I forgot. I think Be- that's it. Behemoth. <laughs> oh, yeah. The there show you go. I was, we were at the show. Oh, that was when you were at. Um, okay. Again. So that was the one. Okay. Well, I don't remember how that was it one. that we. So I was. Well, how was it that the- we always go to shows, but we're never there together? Like we go to shows all the time, but never there together. So that is weird. But I was working at the post office. I literally had to complain and lie to get out of early just so I could barely make it to the show. I missed Gojira. I showed up. Um, some people in my party, a specific person in my party, I don't want to throw his name out there, but he was completely shit faced and doesn't remember anything. Um, <laughs> you know who you are. That, that person knows who he um, is. He knows who he is. He just doesn't remember the show. Um, 
you had fun though later. Um, so no, I've seen him a bunch of times, and that's funny because that's the show you said Behemoth didn't have. No, they did. Oh, they, they did. did. That was um, the show they did. It, it was another show that they didn't like somewhere in Europe. But um, for me, I was like, really, Behemoth is going to be the fucking opening band. Like, yeah. And and they were out there with, with like the fucking fire and the fucking crosses and. You know, yeah. Here comes for the army for Satan. And there was, and of course, I'm over there like, yeah. Yeah. You know, dude, um, Gojira, Gojira too, though. I think they played like second. But, like, yeah, damn, dude. Because we, it, I missed man. the first. So I missed Gojira and Behemoth, which is a, which is a tragedy. And you know what? I'm gonna be honest with you. Uh, Pulpit or whatever that band is called, oh, Volby. I'm yeah, and I'm sorry if you're a fan of them. I they're not my cup of tea. I like some of their my cup of tea. Dude. I like some of their stuff. They kind of grew on me, but it's it's overall not my thing. And it just sucked because like. All of it was like in a high pace, like super high energy. And then, and then, and then it then comes. Event, it came down and we're like, oh, like that probably should have been the first. And, the, and see, that's the problem with Slipknot right now is that they're so commercially successful is that anyone and I mean, anyone can just be on their set list, which is why another reason, reason, another reason um, mm-hmm. this not fest lineup is fucking awesome. I yeah. mean, the softest. And let's just say this with respect. The softest band, and I mean softest as in like not as heavy, is Faith No More. And Faith No More yeah. doesn't need to be heavy, but they are. Some songs are heavy. Mike Patton can growl and scream like a beast. Faith No More is a very underrated band, and I feel like it, this will be good for me to explore their music besides their hits because I'm not going to lie to you. I pretty much only know their fucking singles, so I'm going to go through... Some of their stuff, check it out. So when I go to the show, I enjoy myself because that's what happened to me with Megadeth. And I'm going to go back. I'm going to do Trivium and Faith No More because everyone else I'm good mm-hmm. on. But I really want to give yeah. Trivium and Faith No More a little bit of a listen so I can get into them a little bit. And I'm going to give the, the 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 lesser known acts a listen too so I can enjoy them too because some nobody acts, dude... And a nice example of an, uh, the first Ozfest I ever went to, or no, the second Ozfest I ever went to, uh, this look nobody band called Throwdown was opening up the second stage. Literally, their first uh, their album out was Haymaker. I wasn't even into hardcore. I bought the record because I heard one of their songs. I liked it. Brought it back with me to school. I listened to that album so much, and it kind of got me into hardcore. And then it also got me into meeting people like. Some of my high school friends were like, oh, you like Throwdown? And I was like, oh, you know who they are? And like, I mean, it's like, Oz, obviously, you're an OzFest. They're a well-known band. But yeah, when you're a kid, you know, you're just like, oh, cool. People know what I like. And so it's, it's yeah. um, you know, don't knock out the opening acts, man. They could be the next big deal. So. Yeah, dude. You never, like, you want to be I respectful. Remember seeing, like, um, like, I remember seeing, like, in the, in the radio festivals out here, like, like, um, oh God, what's what's that name? The Strokes were like one of the opening bands for like one time I went. Interpol was like they played like third, and now they're like huge international bands. Um, oh yeah, Interpol. I remember my cousin once. I remember we went to Warped Tour once, and my cousin was like, "Hey, um, I think it was gonna be. I want to say it was Hawthorne Heights, maybe, or it was one of those bigger bands closing, um, Warped Tour." But my cousin goes, "Hey, dude." Let's go see um, this band, dude. They just put out their new album, or they're gonna like release their new albums. They they're gonna you're gonna love them. And he introduced me to fucking Under Oath, and Under Oath was like they weren't even playing like the second stage. They're playing like the third or fourth stage. You know, mm-hmm. they're like yeah. really down on the um, on on the on the size of the fonts, if you will. <laughs> and then like they blew me away. I bought their album, um, Chasing Safety. Um, they're only chasing safety, and now we know like how huge that band turned to be. You know, yeah. like Under Oath is a huge as band, especially like in the scene that we grew up with. So, yeah, a lot of these like lesser known bands, you really don't know them, and then next thing you know it, like, oh shit, that band, like they're like, how come they're so huge? And so yeah, don't don't knock it till you try it. Don't knock them, cause you know what, dude, one day 
you're going to be that little band. I don't know. But yeah, so no, for sure. And like we all kind of have those stories too, right? Like the band and then you see it and you're like, damn, that's awesome. Um, Yeah. So today's theme, or I should say this week's theme, is going to be explaining a moment in time where your emotions basically took the wheel and left a dent. Um, And we're using the word dent because dents are subjective. They can be big. They can be small. They can be fixed, you know, and some aren't. Yes. Some people like their dents. Some people like driving around with their car beat up and just saying, hey, this is, these are beauty marks. It's yeah. signs of, uh, you know, signs of troubled times and you've overcome them. That's, you know. Yeah. Especially like in our gear, like we're both uh, you and I were both like um, big into music and we have like our handful of guitars and stuff and. Like nobody likes when their guitar falls and it takes like a little, you know, when you know when you drop oh, your yeah. guitar or something. But I would much rather take a a bass or a guitar that has a little bit of wear and tear because I know it has a story rather than like a brand new prestige guitar. Mm-hmm. For you sure. Know? Like I rather see like, like yeah, like like when you go to like the Hard Rocks Cafe or whatever, or like the um, Grammy Museum, and they have like the guitar that fucking Bruce Springsfield, you know, toured with from the 80s. And you just see like how it's all faded. And you can see like you can see like the scratches the, of yeah. the picks and shit. Yeah, you're like, fuck, that's hella dope. Like, that's dope. Where it's just like, oh, that's one of his guitars. Like, oh, okay, well, I mean, this is there. Exactly. Like, that can be anybody's fucking guitar. Like, no one wants to see the randomly nice new no-name guitar with a bunch of signatures on it. That is one of the worst. Um, Yeah, it's got to be really... It's got to be like their shit, and it's got to be used. I 100% agree. That's a great great metaphor. Um, Mm -hmm. Did you want to start this glamorous thing off, or uh, how'd you want to do this, sir? Yeah, dude. I I can start it off, man. Hell yeah. Um, So... Really quickly, if I if you don't mind me, I'll go with the backstory of or like the scientific story out there uh-huh. with this one, um, because this is one of the lessons I teach my students. Like, hey, you know, our emotions and you know our critical thinking and everything it all you know it all comes from your brain. It interacts with your body and how we we respond. So, um, according to when I give my lessons, according you know wherever I get my information from, right. Um, the part in your brain called, um, wow, I'm going blank on the shit. I Can I just start naming random shit? Cerebellum. No, because it's like, no, it's the cortex. No, not the, whatever. It, 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 it went. Anyways, there's a part. It's uh, the, the most like, animal like. It's part of that one. Sure. Oh, really? It's part of I'm it's just... within that one. Yeah, but it's like a bigger term. But yeah, um, that's where like your emotions um are built is the most is mostly reaction and everything like that. And it's the most powerful one also. And then in front of our brains we have the prefrontal uh, vortex. Cor- um, cortex, right? Which that one has to do with like yeah. And that one has to do with like critical thinking it makes you know it's the one that develops um in your teens into your early 20s and that's the one that kind of like checks the other one um so whenever we let our emotions kind of get the best of us sometimes we you know you legit like blank out because your most animal-like features come out and it takes like a minute or two before like your critical thinking you know skills kind of starts kicking in and kind of calms you down right um that's why when like when when like you tell kids like when they're super angry like oh okay just take a deep breath or something like calm down get some breath and start thinking critical you know you still yeah. more um knowledgeable but yeah and unfortunately we're we're all humans we all make mistakes and we all say or do things that we we, we cannot take back and I'm for and that's what sucks because once you put it out there, the damage has been done like a you know, like a wrecking ball. You know, you put it out there, damage is done, you really can't do anything. Um so that, that's and that and I kinda 
of course I experienced, I've done shit like that, like all my life. And one, you know, sometimes you re you go back and like, man, maybe I did overreact on that situation. Or like, maybe I shouldn't have said that. Or maybe mm-hmm. I should have done, you can change, you, you wish you can change shit, but you can't. And this one time I'm thinking about is, um, it's fairly reason. I want to say maybe like two or three months ago, um, my siblings and I, we were um, in my car and we were on our way to SoCal. We were like on highway five. And for some reason, my, my siblings were just nagging on me. It was like, pick on Danny while I'm driving. Right. And so I'm like getting all irritated or whatever, you know, of mm-hmm. course I'm getting fucking irritated, whatever. Stop. I get some gas, start going and um i'm just irritated and i snap i snap on my brothers um i snap on my sister and i'm like fuck you guys this is why you know i'm you know i hate going to places i just started talking all of my ass and i was like i'm just gonna fucking like leave like tomorrow i'm gonna book the first flight and i'm fucking flying back to san jose you know i'm just you know i'm blowing up right and you know it took me and i think after like maybe half an hour of like a shout fest you know, everybody kind of got like got quiet, turn on music, and then I calmed down. And then like, <laughs> it, and it's yeah, it's, it's dumb because legit as I'm coming down from the mountain from um, what was it like the Great Bind or like Tejon Pass or whatever it's called yeah, yeah. The, the the mountain five? right before you it's like, yeah, on the five I'm like, that was fucking dumb of me. Like I overreacted for no fucking reason. Yeah. Like, and I just felt like like an idiot. You know, I felt like an idiot. Of course, my stubborn ass, I'm not going to fucking admit that to my brothers or anything. So the, the whole ride, we were just quiet. It's just quiet. It's just whatever. And I think we're, once we're inside the, um, we got to the hotel room and my brother says something jokingly to me. He's like, hey, so what, are you still leaving tomorrow or what? Like, just like, you know, just pissed me yeah. off. And I'm like, man, fuck you. You know, <laughs> I was like, I'm like, man, fuck you, man. You guys fucking drive me. I'm all, you guys fucking annoy the fuck out of me sometimes. Yeah. And that was that. And that was like, we squashed the beef on, you know, that was that. But like, yeah, there's been several times where, you know, I don't think I'm ready to admit, you know, to anybody or like admit to like listeners, like, you know, specific stories. But there's been definitely times where I'm like overreacted to certain situations and, you know, lost friendships and lost people mm-hmm. and lost, you know, lost control of, of, of certain things and myself. And, you know, it sucks. You, you wish you can take him back. You wish you can amend those wrong, but you know, we're human. And the only thing we can do is just rather than dwell on, on what could have been, how you could have changed the thing, or maybe you could have acted different rather than like dwelling on that. I feel like you can use that experience, learn it, let you learn from it and just be better from it. You know, because that's the whole point of mm-hmm. doing this type of conversations. It's not sure admitting our wrongs and admit, admitting our our things that accurate. But you know, I I hate people who are like, oh, I'm a you know, I'm a I'm an Aries or I'm a yeah. I'm a Leo or a I, I'm this. This is why I act. Yeah. I'm like, okay, cool. You're a fucking yeah, idiot. Well, I'm a Scorpio, <laughs> so. You're yeah, fucking... you know, you're an asshole. Yeah, that's exactly. What you are. Um, you're an astrological like, ass. Like, okay. Yeah, like okay, yeah, cool. You're gonna use astrology the, because you were born, and the moon was your rising sun is fucking Listen, one thing, and the other. Like, I'm a fucking like, water okay. sign, and I'm gonna tell you right now. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! If I'm if you're a fire sign, we're not gonna get along. We're not gonna get along. Your embers like, are singeing my fucking self esteem right now. Your aura. Yeah. Your aura. Yeah right now okay <laughs> um which is great i mean i'm not gonna talk i mean i just talked oh, about dude. it but yeah no, we all need like, oh, we all need fairy tales to believe in you know yeah i mean i follow my astrologies i you know i lead i read my my whole school yeah. I, I do all that shit so i'm not gonna i'm not gonna be here and be like oh that's fucking bullshit no it's like i believe it but i'm not gonna be like oh yeah the excuse of my fucking asshole is because i'm a virgo yeah i'm gonna be like actually okay, that, that is part this of is it. what yeah, but I mean, I do know how why an actor thinks certain ways, but also the other thing about that is you have to understand and be like, okay, how can I act when those situations happen? You know, like, 
Yeah. Like if something does not cater to my taste, okay. But that doesn't give me an excuse to like blow up on somebody or right. like be mean or nasty towards somebody. Like I have to own that and be like, okay, well, I know I act this way in the situations. What can I do so I don't become that nasty, worse version of myself? And so with that question and with what you just explained to me, obviously I got your back and I'm going to stick up for you. So you're yeah, driving the car. Same. You can't just pull over and get out. You know, also yeah. you're at a disadvantage because it's not like you can just turn around and sock somebody. It's kind of hard. So like, I'm not saying they were bullies, but they were bullying you. And, um, we all do this. Well, you like, know, my siblings, you right? Know my no, siblings, no, no. And, and, and siblings do that. And my stuff included. And this isn't yeah. me victim shaming anybody, but this is just me saying what it is. It is what it is. And they, they were bullying you and that's why you got annoyed. And that's why you got pissed off because no one likes yeah. no one likes that shit, and we're all guilty of it. We all have a friend we yeah. bug. We all tag team. You know, dude, we all do it. It's human nature. It's mm -hmm. busting balls, dude. Right? But when family yeah. does it, sometimes you're just not in the mood, man. When when, you're, when it's your friends, well, not only that, there's a higher threshold. You know, not only that, but like your family knows how to do it mm -hmm. so faster, they so much more effectively. Like, yeah. Yeah, they just know how to like fuck the bullshit. We're going straight to it. We're going straight for the kill. All right, you know, now, so. now watch the blood vessel on the side and of his some, head, and watch how the accelerator yeah. will just start going up. And, and you know what? It. I mean, in retrospect, I'm of course I'm never gonna admit this to my siblings because yeah. fuck them. And if they're oh, ever listening you to shouldn't. this, they. I mean, yeah, don't feed and the if egos. This, they know exactly what yeah. situation was. But I remember I was pumping gas and. It's already like 10 or 11 at night, whatever. And we're stopping at this, my favorite. Uh, I, I have my places where I like to stop on the five. And I think I'm getting old. You know, it's like a sign that you're getting old where like you have like your favorite rest stop or your favorite gas station on the fucking five. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm not sure if you have one, Coop, but for me, I have two favorite spots. Number one is um, Bottom Willow. Well, um, it's like maybe 15 miles before you uh, cross over the mountain. Okay. There's um, there's there's a Starbucks there. Mm -hmm. There's uh, I call it Tits and Ass, but I believe it's the TNA um, like trucker stop or whatever. There's like a okay, like a Loves or uh, something. like a McDonald's. Oh, it's yeah, called TNA. I think it's Loves. Yeah, TNA, and there's they have a a um an Indian restaurant there too called like Pearl of India or something. Okay. I but might know I can't the area. Remember what exit it is. I'm not from, I, I can't say what, I can't remember what's like the specific. Is it number, the same one that has the Arby's? It's called Bottom Willow. Uh, does it have Arby's there? There's a million places I'm thinking of. Right? It doesn't matter. Everything I'm thinking of is but McDonald's. It's like, yeah. No, it was definitely like, there's, there's like a big there's a motel six and there's like a there's like some little like hotels there also but i mean that's just like any other fucking right stop Random on the five in, in central cal um but anywho uh i'm i'm already i'm i'm irritated you know i'm irritated i just want to get to the hotel already i'm fucking irritated mm. and my brother goes the same one the same asshole who was just like yeah nagging on me for like the past hour he goes Hey man, can you stop at McDonald's so I can, you know, let me get some food and like, can we stop at McDonald's? And of course, me being the asshole, I'm like, no, fuck that, we're late. And I, you know, it, I, it, it was only gonna be like a five minute drive through. Him gets his food and then everybody's happy, whatever. Yeah, but why is but he me driving? Just trying to be a dick that I am, huh? So, uh, first question is just who? Okay, so this is gonna okay. explain yeah. a lot. Did you ask to drive? How, how how did this driving situation happen? Did someone take turns? Were you just the one driving? No, what, what, I explain that. I to was me. the one driving because it was my car. It was we we're using okay, my so, car. To okay, drive so you're in your car. So to be um, fair, he's not really being a dick. Let, let's because it, it did yeah. kind of. You didn't paint the picture. I painted the picture in my head. That it was course. somewhat of a driving Miss Daisy mm -hmm. situation. It's not necessarily that you're driving your own car. He's obviously not going to drive it. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Continue. I just wanted yeah. to <laughs> understand. Yeah, and more. I mean, they can drive it, but it's just like, yeah. I, I like, I enjoy driving. So, like, it's my car. I might as well, I just want to drive it. So, right. 
Um, yeah, he's like, he he's like, hey, dude, can you stop at McDonald's so I can get something to eat? And I'm like, no, fuck you. Yeah, you know, I'm like, I uh, like, I I'm like, no, like that was my payback. I'm like, oh, okay, you're fucking bullying me, right? So of course we're for like five, like for five miles, like I'm getting shit, like you're a fucking asshole, like what the fuck, like why wouldn't you just you know, like so I can get some food, like you're you're like, um, hey, here, look, I'm, I'm gonna like, slow down, you can jump out. <laughs> And I'll be back yeah. around five minutes. And if of you course, want to I, yeah. And and I play the victim, of course. I'm like, man, no, fuck that. You know, you guys were fucking bullying me this whole time. I'm fucking tired. This is what you know. I, I play like the bully. I play like the victim. And then it was like the long, silent fucking drive. Um, and then like I'm telling you back in the hotels, like, hey, you're still you're still gonna go home tomorrow? Or what? I'm like, you're still fucking hungry, you fat ass, or what? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, that's that's like our way to like, hey, fuck you, still bro. right. So, um, but yeah, I feel like I overreacted. Maybe I would definitely did overreact. I don't think you did, and, yeah. and here's why: you, you didn't kick anyone out of the car. You got everyone where they needed to go. No, I'm not gonna get it. Well, then, the thing you didn't yeah. overreact. So, here's the other thing: know. how how well would your brother fare if you treated him the same way? Would he just take it and laugh, or would he get pissed off like you did? Um, he. He will take it and laugh, but then he will get pretty butthurt because I was gonna say something tells me all my family yeah, something tells me they can't take all it. my family yeah. all my family can dish it out. Uh-huh. But when it comes to like taking it, they're they they can dish it out 150, but they only take about 20, 30 percent. Yeah, so they can't take shit. So no, that's exactly what I thought. So right on. Cool. That's all and, I needed to know. And too. myself included. No, and myself well, included also. But but you're always taking the shit. So I disagree. Because it sounds like I, I think because it sounds like I'm you, like the older brother sibling thing. So of course I'm like I'll take it. Fine. But that's what I mean. I so I feel like you're harder on yourself than they probably are on themselves. Clearly, because that's how true. often do you go out of your way to piss them off? I feel like I hear about this all the time. Um, not to piss them off, but definitely to annoy them. Well, okay, I'll but that's what to the, annoy. I mean, but, but there's okay, so. That that counts because annoying and pissed off. There's that it just becomes pissed off. So it's I'd say it's the same yeah. thing. So yeah, okay. So yeah, you do it. Look, I'm not trying to make you a no victim here, Danny, but I also think you're kind of playing the Thank victim you. role, where you're justifying uh-huh. the accusers. <laughs> yeah. You, but you are kind of. You're like, but it's not really their I'm fault. I'm allowing it to happen. And I'm not saying like yeah. this is. But this is our outlet, dude. This is your place to fucking publicize and talk about your problems. Yeah. No, but what what I'm trying to get at is, is like, I guess we're supposed to analyze each other. So it it does seem like. I mean, everything you said is correct. You did. You did. I mean, it's not mm-hmm. good to react a certain way, but at the same time, dude, cause and effect, and. Um, yeah. Do you go up to a wild animal and like throw rocks at its head or do you just like ignore it? I mean, like if you know tensions building and you choose to create more tension and more tension, then whatever you get from that, in my opinion, is what you deserve. Yeah. That's what I think. Yeah. That's not necessarily written in a Bible on a stone. Yeah. Maybe that's not the way you should live your life. But I just feel like not necessarily just on a karma standpoint, but on a standpoint of educating someone on how to treat people because if you never learn that there's a breaking point, you're never going to mm-hmm. learn that you're the problem. So, you know, like yeah. siblings are kind of excluded because like it's part of what, who we are. Right. But I'm saying just yeah. in general, like, you know, you want to be like, a, you want to be mindful of how you're treating people because yeah, I like you said, you don't know how they're reaction, feeling. A reaction. That too, man. Like, and like, and I'm not yeah. saying, you know, we're crazy, but people fucking piss people off all the time. And I'm not saying this is you, but it's just, it's a similar thing where it's like, oh, I was just having fun. I didn't know he was upset. And it's like, yeah, dude, because you didn't fucking take the time to just think, hey, am I the asshole? Am I taking this too far? How would I feel right now if I was him? Well, of course not. You know what I mean? No one's going to fucking think that at the time because it's just like, oh, ho, 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 ho. Right. Like better him than me or something. But, you know, like you should feel like, hey, we're kind of giving this guy a rough time. It shouldn't just always be like, this is how it is. Uh-huh. 
You know, I'm just saying, I know when I'm busting balls. I also know when I'm kind of pissing people off. And I feel like most people also know that. I think just people like to play dumb and act like, oh, I didn't know you were upset. Because it's easier to say that than apologize. So, I don't know. Yeah, of course. I've been around no a one lot of it. No one wants to say that they're wrong. No, ever. And, um, ever. Ever. And look, I, this isn't me shitting on your siblings at all. It's just that's what we're talking about. But, yeah. um, yeah, dude, I, I don't feel like in your situation, I mean, you, you really didn't. It was reactionary. Like, what were you supposed to do? Yeah. Just sit there and quiet? Yeah. And then, like, here's the other option. You don't say anything, and then what? Like, you just let it fester, and then, like, you know what I mean, dude? So, eventually... Yeah, and build up. Yeah. What they got was what they wanted. They wanted a rise out of you. They wanted you to make a scene so they could laugh at it. Um, yeah. I'm, I understand that because I relate to it so much. Like, I am the guy yeah, that becomes the villain. Um, mm-hmm. You know? And it is a lose. You feel like you lose. But sometimes you got to remind yourself, you're yeah. like, you know, it's a loss, but not necessarily a complete loss because you're honest about your feelings. So think about that way, Danny. Yeah, you, you got annoyed, but yeah. you were honest about how you were feeling about something. You were explaining to them why and how they were upsetting you, which is a very healthy way to communicate. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I'm just, you know, like... For every negative thing that you were striking yourself for, I think you need to attribute the things you did do right. You know, you didn't crash the vehicle. You didn't get so overwhelmed you had to pull over and sit there with your head in your hands. I mean, sounds to me like you held your composure pretty well, considering you were driving a car and being annoyed. And And that is not a fun... I've been in that boat. That is not a fun situation. Because you're helpless. No. No. No, and, and I mean, you're right. At the end of the day, like, I was able to say how was I how I was feeling, why I got, you know, mad right. or pissed off in a certain way and all this stuff. Um, And then, yeah, I mean, was the communication could have been done a little bit better with a much cooler head? Of course. But you know what? Sometimes you yeah. you don't think about that. But that wasn't time. but those but, but that wasn't the circumstances in the environment you were in. You weren't in a conversation yeah, where exactly. people were asking you how you were feeling. You were getting shit on. So, yeah. I mean, that's like saying, you know, I watched Carrie, and I think she's a little over the top with the killing. Maybe she should have just been like, okay, guys, it's not really nice. He poured blood all over me. I'm going to go home now. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. that would have been really but responsible you- of her, but it probably wouldn't have made a good movie or a book. <laughs> yeah. Or, but yeah, or, or a legend in this case. Well, and there's no moral lesson, but, you know? No. It's sad. There um, sometimes there has to be bloodshed for a moral lesson, Danny. Yeah, it's terrible. No, um, and, and Carrie's a great fucking movie too. Yeah, great fucking movie. That Jesus still creeps me out. I think we talked this before. Religion we is a scary thing, it. man. When it's used as a tool. No. But I'm talking about like the actual Jesus that the mom had in that in that movie. Oh, and, the, and yeah, no, I don't think yeah, we talked so. about it. No, we didn't. Oh, I don't think so. Okay, yeah, it's just that movie. We'll talk. We'll we'll dedicate a whole yeah, episode we'll one that. day about like Carrie. I think <laughs> and, that's like, a good idea. And like the and like what was like the um, tipping points for her, and why was John Travolta just so dreamy in that <laughs> in that movie? And then we can, and then we can watch the Rage Carrie too. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, I, ne- I never like saw that one. Face turns to like a one. fucking tattoo or something. <laughs> um, I saw, I saw it. I wasn't so stoked, but yeah, I saw I, it. That one kind of got the. It could have been worse. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that was that was. What about you, know, you dude? What about me? Um. <laughs> what about me, man? <laughs> uh, what do you want to know? <laughs> uh, so <laughs> I got a long so list. Coop. I, I, I got about a thousand. Overreacted. I got about a thousand examples of this. Um, <laughs> you know, the best one I can give you that's most recent is my Memorial Day situation, which is awkward. But I'm gonna bring it up. I won't use names, um, but um, I am gonna say who it was. You know, so because you said the same thing. So um, yeah. I decided to go up and spend uh, the weekend with my dad. I thought it was gonna be kind of cool. We 
and we don't see a lot of each other. It's like twice a year. Long story short, me and his girlfriend have never gotten along. Probably never will. I kind of set the record straight this weekend. Um, a lot of people in my mm-hmm. family uh, don't do well with confrontation, and that's fine. But they are also very passive aggressive and like won't say like what they mean, but they'll talk shit behind your back. So anyway, I'm not like that. I got sick of it, and I just told her I felt cleared the air. Problem is, I'm the only one who did that, so now I'm kind of a pariah. So, um, that was pretty much the nutshell. What happened? Let me go through it. Uh, so she's got her family. My dad has his, you know. Um, but it's always kind of felt like in the last few years, and it's probably because my dad doesn't have the best relationship with me and my sister that um, Mm -hmm. we've noticed it more, but he, um, her, her son, she basically has kids the same age as us, which is also kind of creepy. It's like, uh, so yeah. So, you know, it doesn't give you the feeling that you're replaced, but, and and you you don't want to admit that because it's kind of childish, but then it's kind of like, but then sometimes you crunch the numbers and the data and you're like, ah, it kind of makes sense. So, I take Friday off. Me and Steph take Friday off. We want to go. Um, um, oh, wait. No, I didn't take Friday off. I'm sorry. I leave after work Friday. We get in Friday morning, which is kind of okay. late Friday morning. So it's like basically because I wanted to be there all day Saturday and then leave on Sunday. So we get there Saturday. Everything's fine. You know, we're. I don't know about anything, but I don't know about anyone else showing up. It's supposedly just us because I asked like for a whole week. I didn't get much information. So my dad's not the best communicator. So, you know, we're having fun. We're hanging out. You know, it's cool. It's kind of chill. Like my dad's like, hey, we're not doing a whole lot. You know, we're just kind of like hanging out. So we decide we're going to go take go for a walk. We, go and we take the dog. We take the boys and... um or no, we didn't take both boys. We left Damon to sleep. So my dad's girlfriend was staying home, and I guess it didn't seem like she probably wanted to stay with him, I guess. I don't know. But, like, usually it's always like, oh, we can watch the kids. It's not a big deal. So then we kind of were like, oh, do you want to watch yeah. it? Just kind of, like, hang around, and he's just napping. So basically, don't do anything. Just stay at home and chill while we go hot in the heat and walk. Yeah. Like, not a big deal, right? I barely can hang out with my dad. Mm-hmm. so we I don't know we go for a walk for like an hour and it's cool you know I hear him I'm playing with my my son Vincent on the playground and then I hear him of course mention to Steph oh um I'm gonna invite his sister and and her husband but I haven't told him and, I, and it's just like why don't you ever tell me what's going on because me and her are very close right now but it's like annoying that you like don't want to tell me about things and then blindside me with people showing up like that's so problematic on both sides for her and for me yeah so yeah. anyway that's a little foreshadowing so then we run it we see this golf course on the way back and my son vincent is like oh that's a cool bridge and there was no one on this golf course mind you so i was just like okay cool mm-hmm. um I'm gonna take them. I'm gonna I'm gonna supervise them, walk around with them. But there literally were dudes mowing the lawns, and there was no one on it. So I was like, "Cool, there's no one over here." And it wasn't like a private golf course. So yeah, I just knew something was gonna happen. I knew these annoying ass white people are gonna come out of nowhere. So I'm walking him back, and now we're just walking back. He wasn't even running around doing anything. And of course, these fucking dumbass old white people. God, they suck. Um. Oh, your son's so cute. And I'm like, oh, here we go, bitch. You know, like, here we fucking go. You're just waiting for the annoying thing to come out of her mouth. She doesn't say anything, but then her fucking old liver-spotted husband comes out and says, oh, you know, there's signs up and you shouldn't. And I I just cut him off. I didn't even want to hear his old ass talk. I was just like, you know what? I showed him the bridge. I don't really care about your rules. Have a nice day. And, like, I literally walked away. Mm -hmm. Fuck you, old people. I don't care. I don't answer to you. I pay into your fucking yeah. Medicare. I pay your fucking Social Security. You shut up. So anyway. Yeah. Um, that fucking wasn't boomer. my freak out. So we go home. Mm-hmm. And then I kind of tell my dad. I say, you know, dad, like, I, I'll, we could stay. He was, he was like, oh, well, I wanted to have the barbecue Sunday. 
And I'm like, well, dad, you know, next time, why don't you tell me that so I can make plans to leave after and like not make it awkward. Totally cool. Staying a little later. Mm-hmm. We can make it work. At least give me the opportunity to say no, you know? Yeah. So anyway, everything seems fine, you know? But, but this whole time, this, this whole day, his girlfriend's just being hella mean, hella naggy, hella rude. As soon as we get back, he wanted to go to the grocery store with me so we can pick up stuff to barbecue for the next day. As soon as we get back in, she throws mm-hmm. this tantrum. His girlfriend throws this, like, she's, she's an adult woman in her 50s or close to 60s. Throwing just, yeah. just this tantrum that she knows what she needs and she has to go. Like, as if she can't put a list together mm-hmm. for me and my dad. Whatever, so fine. I won't go with my dad now. You can go. But that's, once again, more on my mm-hmm. dad for not standing his ground and sticking up for himself and letting someone else tell him what to do. So, once again, I can't get mad at her for that. I'm mad at him. I'm not mad at him. I'm annoyed at him for it. But it's an it's a passive thing. It goes away. It's just like thing after thing with her attitude. And then, you know, like we have two kids, man, and, and they're hungry like every two, three hours. So we got to feed them. It's not like, oh, you know, it's not like we're just adults and we can eat three times, twice or three times a day, you know. So it's like part of that is mm-hmm. the problem, too. We're like, you know, we got to get food ready for them and then. I wanted to hang out with my dad, and then he goes, oh, um, it was like 10 o'clock, and where everything was chill. We're just hanging out because 10 o'clock isn't even late. And then, um, once again, mm-hmm. fucking homegirl so, says, oh, we got to get up and go to church tomorrow. We better get going to bed. And I was like, okay, whatever, fine. So I'm like, okay, so I don't say anything. And then um, we're, like, hanging out in the room, and, and even me and Steph were like, like, we're just hanging out by ourselves, and, and, like, the kids were laughing, and then we were kind of thinking to ourselves, we're like, we didn't say it out loud, but we are thinking to ourselves, like, why are, what are we doing? Like, all we need is this, like, group. Because this we're finally having fun. Like, we're laughing, and it's just mm-hmm. us in a room. Like, what are we doing? Why are we here? Yeah. So it does give you that feeling, like, why am I 200 miles away from home? Oh, okay. Um. So then... Yeah. We wake up in the morning, and apparently she texted Steph at, like, 10.30 at night. You know, so, like, they got to get to bed at 10 o'clock. But 10.30 at night, she decides, oh, I'm going to buy tickets for the zoo for the next day. And we're like, okay, that sounds cool. Uh, But they're going to church. So we wake up in the morning. My dad said he was going to make breakfast. So we're like, okay, cool. We're going to have breakfast when they get back. I'll help them cook. So then we get a text from his girlfriend saying, be ready by 9.15. We're going to the zoo. And me and Steph look at each other like, we're like adults. Like, what, when did you ask us? Did we coordinate this? Like, why mm-hmm. are you telling me what I'm doing? Like, my bad. I didn't know I was on a field trip and I was 10. Um, yeah. So we're kind of like, okay. So I look at her and I'm like, well, I guess we're not eating breakfast. So I'm like, okay, well, let's leave now and go get the kids something to eat. So we're kind of annoyed about it because we're like, because then I'm kind of bitching to her. I'm like, okay, this is kind of annoying. Like, we're skipping breakfast. The kids need to eat. We're rushing to go to the zoo thing that, I mean, to be fair, yeah, it'd be fun for the kids. But you didn't ask us what we wanted to do. We could have came up with an idea together. It would have been maybe, like, better. Anyway, it's just kind of, like, overbearing, you know, and... um you you wanted that option rather well yeah than man it's cool. collaborative we're friend we're we're friends we're adults you know and um let us yeah. say no once again communication right so um whatever we get annoyed about it but we're like it's fine so we go to Starbucks Champ throws up in the back seat he's not feeling well so then we got to change his clothes um, then we got to feed Damon so we're running late we're probably thirty minutes behind schedule. So we get to this place probably about 9.40. We're supposed to be there at 9.15. And then, uh, by the way, this place, when we're driving there, I, t- I told Steph I was bitching. I was like, okay. It also would have been nice if she would have told us, like, hey, this place is about 20 miles away from where we are, like through the mountains in the desert. So, okay, I thought it was going to yeah. be, like, near so- where we were, whatever. So we're just in the middle of fucking nowhere. That's going to be like a 10, 15 minute drive. Yeah. yeah. It's a 35, 40 minute drive. Um, kids are hung. I mean, it's just like we got kids. I got a year, one year old and a three and a half year old in the back seat, dude. So yeah, I'm getting irritated. Steph's driving. She doesn't know what's going on. We get there. Finally, we hang around for a good 20 minutes, dude. Just kind of like keeping the kids busy. Luckily there's a playground. 
we're not just not hearing anything. And then I'm like, they're not here. Okay, what the fuck? Okay, how did we beat them? Whatever. So 20 minutes go by. She texts us and says, I went to the wrong address. And I'm like, me and Steph look at each other and we're like, but she's the one who texted us the address. How does that work? Yeah. We got here. So then we're just like annoyed and laughing, but like really, really annoyed. We're like, because we're already yeah. like, we already don't, we, we already don't like her. We're just like, we're over it. And, and it has nothing to do with this trip. That, that has been decided long ago. She's done some weird shit. Yeah. Um, but I'm just like, as far as this trip goes, I'm like, fuck this person, right? So I'm, I'm just like, okay, this is stupid. And then I got annoyed too because I'm like, normally when you say, hey, we're, we're at the wrong place, run away now, we're 15 minutes away, you give a, a just complimentary, it's just common decency to say how long you're going to be since you're already putting yeah. someone out. None of that. Yeah. I reach out to my dad. I'm like, yo, uh, line for the tickets are pretty long. Should I get in line? Because she said she bought tickets, but we were like, did she get the right tickets? Because she wasn't even at the right zoo. So, yeah. So then I'm like, okay. So then I then I have the conundrum of, do I just buy the tickets I need and then somewhat come off as an asshole? Like, well, I'm not going to buy you guys tickets. Well, we all had the agreement we're going to do something together. So I thought I should just buy all the tickets. So I buy all the fucking tickets. Mm -hmm. And before I'm even in line, I must have texted him again saying, I'm in line to buy the tickets. You know, I want no response. So I'm just getting irritated because I'm like, how is no one telling me what's going on? We still don't know when you're going to be here. You're not telling me whether or not I need to buy these damn things. So I get to the front of the line as soon as she hands me the receipt. My dad's girlfriend walks in and just acts like she wants to take over. No, we already bought the tickets. I wanted to slap her. I'm like, I texted you like the last 40 minutes. Yeah. Well, you guys were supposedly in your way. And I don't think you were driving. So what the fuck? So I'm like, okay. I just brush it off. Like, how come you can't just, Yeah. The girl gives me the refund. I'm like, that's fine. That's fine. Thank you. Yeah. And she's such a Karen, the my dad's girlfriend, because she's like, I'm like, let's just do the refund later, because there was like a line. And she's all, no, do the refund now. And I was just like, oh, my God, I want to get out of here. Like, you know, she's just, she's a total Karen to give you guys a backstory. Um, Yeah, you're just annoyed. Just annoyed. The kids are finally, and it's been, now it's been, what, 40 minutes. Finally, we can go into the fucking zoo. Yeah. So. We're going into the zoo. I'm like, I got blinders on. I don't want to talk to him. I don't really want to talk to my dad. I definitely don't want to talk to his girlfriend. I'm just like, let's just enjoy the zoo and maybe I'll cool off. Soon as we're walking yeah. in the zoo, she just starts yelling at us. We need to go to the bear area. They're feeding the bears right now. We need to go. And I'm like, you go to the bears. You do whatever you want. My kid's going over here. I'm going with him. We've been waiting for 40 minutes. I'm not, do whatever you want. We're going over here. So yeah. then she yells back. Don't be mad. And the rest I blacked out on. And I could tell you what I said. <laughs> so that's when I, you know, when they, you know, when they pause things on the Dukes of Hazard and like, looks like our boys ran into some trouble. Like, it's like, she's all, yeah, exactly. she's all, don't get mad. And it's like, this is about that time that bitch wish she didn't say that. So, um, so yeah, yeah so. <laughs> um, when keeping it real yeah, goes yeah, wrong. Yeah, when keeping it real goes right. Um. So uh, yeah. I had my moment when keeping it real, and uh, I basically told her off. I, uh, I, I, we were at the tiger area, and I don't even remember the tigers. And I said, and yes, I'm laughing because I enable my own bullshit. Yeah. But I also dislike this woman yeah. so much to the point where I still don't feel guilty at all. And I even told my dad I'd say it again to her face in a heartbeat. So let's go over what I said. Yeah, I said, you know what, just. <laughs> Dude, and this is, there's people here. Like, there's families. Full on families. Not a, a, now, on now a mind Memorial you, this Day isn't the weekend. And okay, now let me paint a picture as well. This isn't the Oakland Zoo. It's not that crowded. But there's maybe yeah. five or six people scattered within the, the 30 foot radius I'm in right now. So it's, there's people. Uh huh. I, I, I yell at the top of my lungs. I, I, I just say, fuck off to her. And then, and then Steph said she vividly remembers me shooing my hand and telling her to go away because she kept trying to talk to me. And I'm like, go yeah. away. Like, so Steph thought that was kind of funny, but she, um, but I vividly remember this and it's kind of fucked up, but I, I, I 
my dad was once again defending her. And, and <laughs> I literally remember doing this. I looked him straight in the eyes and I was like, dad, she's a bitch. Like, <laughs> and, and dude, she looked at me and I know she heard me and I don't care. She turned around and stormed off and I don't give a shit. And long story short, um, yeah, I kind of burned a bridge with my pops, but Hey, you know, we don't need to send Christmas cards out every year, right? So no, no, but uh yeah. joking aside, um she's she's been causing drama with me and my immediate family for the better part of uh 8 years now. Um back when I was going to graduate college, to give you guys a little insight, when my dad first got with her and my mom was still alive, he said, uh, "My girlfriend would really like to come." Because she really wants to thank your mom for divorcing me. So this is the type of person I'm talking about wow. here. Yeah, this is the toxic, my, crazy my. person I'm dealing with here. Yeah, this was eight years ago when but she you barely. Know what? That's not. That's not even on your mom. No, it's not, not on my mom on at your all. Stepmom. Over... Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. It's not on your dad's girlfriend or partner. Yeah, that's on your dad. Yeah, why for would sharing you, why that. Would your dad say that he overshares yeah. so much stuff, man, and it's rough because. I don't know where it comes from. Part of me hopes it comes from a place of warning. Like this isn't good, but based on the fact that he's like, that's how she feels. And I just wanted to know if you thought it's a good idea. That tells me that it's not, you're not warning me about the psycho. You're, you're, um, you're almost trolling me with it. You know, you're like, cause first of all, no kid wants to hear the, your parents bring up divorce. Even if it's been 10 years since no. they split up. It's just not a subject you want to talk about. And it's not that it hurts my feelings, but it just it doesn't concern me. It's none of my business. It's it's a relationship between you and my dad. That has nothing to do with me, right? So well, like, once again, why like is that being brought earlier. up to me about my graduation when, first of all, not to be a fucking bell of a ball bitch, but why is she coming up to my mom when it's my graduation? My mom has nothing to do with that. You're just starting drama that isn't even about my mom. Like this graduation is supposed to be about me graduating college. All you gotta do is say thanks. So yeah, my dad tells me that and says, "Yo, oh, yeah, do you think she can come?" And I'm all, "Fuck no!" Like I'm like, "Absolutely Man, not." I would not you. want yeah. my memory of my graduation with my family be ruined because she is crazy. No. So my dad tells me he didn't bring her. Come to find out, she's in the. She was in the. She was hiding in the car during the whole ceremony at my school. Wow. This is just, this is, I have to talk about this because it's, it's like, I've been keeping it uh, up inside of me and I don't care how weird that sounds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's no way I've been keeping it. it up for like eight years, man. And enough's enough. Yeah. You know, like I said last week when I went on my Karen ran about Starbucks, enough's enough. You know, first the green stoppers, yeah. now my dad's girlfriend, I'm done. No, so. On the side note. Yeah. San Jose needs to get it together with those green stoppers. Yeah. You know. Big side note. I know our buddy may get. I know our buddy Miguel, like he was, it, what he found them on the floor. Like they're just giving away fucking <sighs> those green stoppers. Well, I responded to him and, and I shared it too. And I said, you know, you might want to pick those up. They're more, they're, that's more valuable than Ethereum right now, <laughs> at least in California. I like to, uh, I like to imagine like the Starbucks baristas in Texas. It's like the candy man from fucking Charlie <laughs> like, the Chocolate Factory. Like handing them out? Away the candy. <laughs> Throwing them yeah. in the air. Oh yeah, you want one? You know here? what? I'm I have gonna, a million here. I'm gonna go get a coffee down Dude. the street. I'm gonna close the Starbucks down early. Is doesn't he close the candy shop early? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think he does. Um no, dude, because I was like, I sent you a picture what yesterday, or I think I posted uh I posted on social media yesterday, Wednesday. Um, because I went to I went to Safeway to pick up some stuff for my goddaughter's graduation. Yeah. And there's a Starbucks there, and I'm like all right, I, I think it's about the time for the afternoon iced coffee, you know, run. So I got my iced coffee and it was a brand new Starbucks. I didn't need the green stopper, but I know earlier in the week you were like, hey, dude, like, let's keep this like ongoing joke going. I'm like, yeah. all right. So I'm like, oh, excuse me. No, I, with my best freaking Americanized, freaking colonized, freaking voice ever. I'm like, um, excuse me. Why is it always like, when I, for me, whenever I want to be like the non threading, because I already look freaking threading yesterday. I had my freaking button ups all the way up. I got my hair all slicked back. I got the, the lokes. I, I look the part, you know, I, I look like the fucking crazy, 
Cholo X. I, yeah, I'll, I'll go back to that. But I, I looked the parts. So I'm like, excuse me, do you have any of the green stoppers? Like, oh no, we're all out. Like, bitch, you just opened the Safeway like a See, month ago, Danny. Maybe even like two months. And it's okay, Coop. You want to know how new this fucking Safeway is, and specifically how new this Safeway, this Starbucks inside the Safeway is. Where what area is you know where the, is the Safeway? Okay, you know where you know where the various uh, flea market is. Right? Oh, I know what you're talking about. Of course you do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know how across the street they they like sold all the parking lot and they turned to like apartment complexes and shit. Yeah, like condos for the Bart people. Yeah, right next to the condos. Legit, they just open at like the shopping center's not even complete. The Safeway is the only thing open right now. Like, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, throwing the, I'm throwing the streets out. <laughs> yeah. I know it, what you're talking it's about. Like, yeah. Dude, it's, it's brand new. Like, it's so brand new. Like, they have a coming soon chase. You know, not, they haven't even built the freaking the, the gas stations for Safeway there. And for those who don't know what Safeway is, it's like a Vons. It's a supermarket. It's your Vons or your HEP for my Texas people out or, or, there. Or your yeah, Ralph's if you're from, like, the L.A. Your area. Your Ralph's, Yeah. Your Vaughn. Safeway's pretty know, well known. I, I think Safeway is pretty national. I I would like to believe so. I think so. But I think you're good on that. It one. was just I was just so disappointed, dude. And um, but yeah, and yeah, dude. And then the way I was dressed yesterday, um, I posted a picture on my social media, so you'll be able to see how I was dressed yesterday. But I had like two or three of my of my family members come up to me and be like. Hey, do you, how come you, you look like somebody who would play for those Lobos? Like, <laughs> Lobos. Look like a member. <laughs> yeah, I was told so many times that I look like I belong in the lo- God, in Lobos, dude, Lobos. I love like, whoever said that to you because that is such an accurate reference because you looked very 90s and Los, there's nothing more 90s than Los Lobos, dude. Fuck yeah, dude. Hey, Los Lobos did the theme song for Desperado, dude. Yeah. A Cancion del like Mariachi. For La Bamba. You know what's funny about they that also song? Did everything for La Bamba. Oh, they did. La- that makes Which sense. One? Well, they well idea. they cut yeah, that was La- that was Los Lobos, the 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 La Bamba yeah. song that they that they that was their another hit they had during the movie. Because I think the version yeah, in the movie so that he the, was lip syncing was Los Lobos. Yeah, all of the uh, all of the um, Richie Ballin songs in La Bamba, mm-hmm. I think it was Los Lobos. And yeah. if, if you remember when they. In the movie where he goes to Tijuana, him and Bob, they go to Tijuana and they see like a band playing La Bamba. Uh-huh. That's those Lobos right there. Oh, okay. So like, see, th- I like that stuff. I love little. <laughs> but, dude, that's so it's such yeah. an accurate. I hope that was one of your uncles or aunties that said that because for sure that's so, kind of a throwback reference. My my cousin. So my cousin, <laughs> who's like a sister to me, said it. Um, and she's like, wow. The, and she's like, wow. She calls me fat ass. I'm fat people if you guys didn't know she's like wow fat ass you look like a fucking member of those lobos i'm like fuck i hate those lobos yeah danny <laughs> and, then, and then that's what you need to be yeah. like yeah i need to work on my anger yeah like hey fat yeah. ass and then and then like an hour or two later because my my goddaughter goes to one high school yeah rather than like the high school like across the street from their house yeah and then uh so we go to her her graduation we come back and my other cousin, who's also my god, um, my godfather, uh, my padrino, he's there and his son graduated also. And so he comes up to me and goes, he goes, damn, Michael, you look like you belong in those lobos. And I started <laughs> fucking laughing so hard. Um, and I turned to my cousin Lorena and I'm like, dude, Lorena just said this like an hour ago. And it was just like both of them. Um, I mean, they're all around. We're all around the same age, you know. Yeah. So we're all like everybody like did the same reference. That's like, hella funny, dude. You look like a member of the Lobos, and I'm like, son of a bitch. I'm all, okay, so I'm 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 not wearing button up shirts all the way up anymore. I like Los Lobos. What? You don't like Los Lobos? Nah, but I do like the I I I I guess I kind of dress like Los Lobos. I do. Wait, wear, but are like, you just hating because you got thrown in that category? I think so, because I consider them, because I hate those Lonely Boys. And I'm sorry if you listen to Lonely Boys. I fucking hate those Lonely Boys. I mean, um, okay, so I, I get it. But then I also feel like if you like Los Lobos, you can't hate Los Lonely Boys. Because Los Lonely Boys sounds like Los Lobos. They, I, 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 
pretty sure they are Los Lobos. Maybe <laughs> they're all the same people. It, genre wise, they're exactly the same band. Tell me I'm wrong. They, they got the Los Lobos could have played that Chicano song heaven. rock music. Yeah. Hey, that yeah. song Heaven is kind they of a slapper the, though. You you don't really well, like the I guitar fucking part? I hate that song, dude. No, listen. <laughs> and my sister <laughs> my, my, my sister and I we have this thing like you know, like we you listen to a song for like 6 hours long, you know, blah, 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 for a million bucks. And there's there's so there's like there's several bands that I absolutely hate and I and I hate listening to the music. Number 1, Sublime. Oh. I I I used to love Sublime. I used to love Sublime, but Sublime got played so much that I hate Sublime now. But you know, their songs are freaking always they're gone. Their songs are good. I just like they're just too overplayed. Where I hate them. I hate Sublime. Fuck. Date, Number two, Date Rape's a good one though. Yeah, I got you. Number oh, two, dude, that's a great one also. And then the um, um, that one Date Rape, and then there's another one the um, where he talks about like. They're the riots in LA and they're like uh, uh doing time. They, like, yeah. 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 It's yeah. doing time, right? It's summer. Oh there, no, no, no. Some... It's not doing time. It's like something nineteen ninety four or something. Yeah. You know how they go it to starts with the cop store breaking a window shit. down in uh yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then one goes one eight seven on the motherfucking cop. The fucking... yeah. 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 And then um I like their summertime and the living's easy. Yeah, um, no, that's a that good one. That one's great. Oh, um, yeah. But so you, great I know, I know. Just, you got you. Number two, though, yeah. you said there's another one. Social Distortion. Social Distortion is another band that um, one of my ex-girlfriends, she loves Social Distortion. And I kind of didn't like them that much to begin with. Yeah. I feel like their songs like really dragged, and I feel like I just didn't like them. So now I associate that band with an ex-girlfriend, so I just don't like them at all. That makes um, sense. Like anytime I I'm on the rate, you know, I'm driving in and you know, fucking ball and chain or like freaking um the ring of fire comes up, I just turn off the radio. Same thing with Sublime. I'm like, oh, let me turn that shit off because I'm gonna get pissed off for the next three minutes. I kinda hear you. Um they they definitely were played out. But I enjoy all so those, those bands, two bands though. Those two they're great musicians. I just don't like them. Um but those two like I hate. And then my sister and I, whenever like we do this challenge, like for a million bucks, we listen to this song for like an hour. We always, we always, I always tell my sister, like, okay, which one will you do you tolerate a little bit better? Number one, how far is heaven by those love, the lonely boys? I oh fucking, yeah, that song is horrible. Number two, a song that I can only tolerate very, very little, and I choose not to tolerate at all, is Feliz Navidad by fucking Jose Feliciano. Jose Feliciano. I yeah, like I, that I fucking, song, but I will tell you why. I, I, I don't. It's not. I'll tell you why. It's definitely not even on my top twenty Christmas songs. No, it has nothing no, to do. And, 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 oh, typical. Here's a white guy who doesn't like something Hispanic. Let me finish. No, no, <laughs> no. I but, don't even like it, and I consider myself I, a member of that. I got no reason. I just. I'm gonna say it. I'm just not big on it. I don't need to like it. Just like how you don't need to explain no. why Ball and Chain or Santeria or whatever annoys you or what I got. I totally get why those are played out. Bad Fish is a pretty good one. But um <laughs> Oh yeah, that's but, a good one. But no, dude, I totally get it because you you get in those modes where it's not even that you don't like the band, you're just sick of hearing the same shit from them. Like yeah. um yeah. give you a good example, I guess for me, it would kind of be Michael McDonald, I guess, in a way. Like yeah, I can listen to some of his music, but his voice does. Like, I just want to laugh and make fun of him the whole time. So I'm not really going out of my way to listen yeah. to his music. And then another example yeah. of something I always change is like, uh, super played out would be like, I don't know, like weird contemporary music from the 2000s probably. I'm such a on. weird contemporary nut though. I like a lot of it. I don't know, dude. Yeah. I'd have to probably put a list together of songs I hate that from bands I love. Um, yeah. Okay. There's, I, yeah. I'm I sure there's a long a list, list that. that I could do too. Yeah. But no, dude, I totally understand where you're coming from. Because it's like certain shit. Okay, I'm like that with Weezer. 
I'm over Weezer. Okay. I could not listen to Weezer again I, and be totally fine with it. I'm over Weezer. Okay. And I love Weezer. Yeah. yeah. Like Hashpipe, great song. They don't play that one out. Oh, yeah. But, God, dude, no one cares that you like Toto, dude. Everyone likes Toto. Get over yourself. Yeah. And by the way, although a good th- cover th- album, th- they all sound like the fucking covers, dude. You know, like, what if you're you a karaoke mean? band, that's great. But covers should sound like you playing the song. All their covers okay. sound like covers. Okay. Like cover bands. And yeah, I'll, There's no I, character. I'll agree with that with you. They're, they're not exactly. There's nothing Weezer-ish about There's no character. Covers. And that's the whole point of a cover. Yeah. Because if you're just trying so, to play it like the original, you're not. what's the point? You're never going to be as good as the people that wrote the song. Yeah. Like, for example, um, MTV a long time ago did, like, MTV Icons. Right. And they, and they were doing for The Cure, and I love The Cure. Uh-huh. And we love The Cure. Yeah, The Cure's fucking um, awesome. And, and Blink-182 did their version of A Letter to Elise. Mm. And Blink did it Blink style rather than, like, which is fucking what awesome. The song. And they yeah. got so much they got so much shit for it because who oh, sounds nothing like the cure. I'm like, that's the fucking point is then have the cure hey, play. We yeah. Like, and then, you know, like um Deftones cover song and AFI did like just like Kevin, but it really didn't like it wasn't a it was more like the cure, you know, with Davy Havoc and just like a little bit it, it was in very like AFI ish. That's way too. Anything. That's way too bouncy of a song for them. AFI. Yeah, that yeah. bass line needs to be like a pop oh, punk. If anything, Blink One Eighty Two would have made a really good cover of that. With that bass line. Yeah, I think so. That would have been fun. Oh yeah, that's a very pop punk, especially with that bass line. Um, I'm surprised they didn't try and go pop punk on the cover. Well, I, and I'm surprised they went with Letter to Elise because Letter to Elise is more of their, it's a little more poppy um, when it comes to Cure, like super sad lyrics and stuff. But like, um, I don't know, maybe I'm talking all my ass. Well, but dude, it's a great fucking song. The Cure's Disintegration. Um, but like, album. I always refer. Oh, 100%. Such dude. a heavy. But record. like, I always reference back to like. Like when Some 41 did their covers of like Metallica, when they did all their Metallica. Right, um, like for the Metallica icon, right, and it was like, yeah, some forty one, like they did. I feel like they did their covers justice because it sounded like some forty one, right. Um, but you can still feel like the Metallica attitude to it. Yeah, and from all of them, I feel like they're the ones who did like the best when it came to that performance. You don't think Corned way better than Avril Lavigne? Oh, was it, did she do Fuel? <laughs> I think she did. Yeah. Oh God, yeah. I've never been an yeah, Avril Lavigne did. fan. And what they were saying. Neither. I never thought she was hot. Never thought she was hot. And 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 me. I never thought she was hot. I, I was like, oh my, oh, um, I was like, oh, you dude, she's punk. Though I'm like, yeah, but doesn't mean. But she's like, not I'm even punk. Be, oh my God, I'm punk. You're punk. Oh my God, that's my. No, she's you not. Know who's punk. my crush? Um. Rachel Lee Cook was my crush, you know. Um, is that the chick from uh, Rachel Lee Cook? Definitely. Wait, she Rachel Lee Cook. She saw that. Oh, the black-haired girl, the main girl, the main girl yeah. from She's All That. Yeah, yeah. You mean Janie Boggs? She came out in the music kidding. video for or Lainey Boggs, right? Was she, that her name? She came out. Yeah, so, I don't know. It's been forever since I've seen that movie. Don't but you leave me hanging. She came on, out in the like... music video. She came out. She came out in the uh, New Found Glory video also. And she no, was, she's pretty. Oh, she also came out. She also came on Josie and the Pussycats. That's right. She was like one of. She was. She was maybe the main one, or she's one of them. Yeah. No, she's super pretty. She's one. She's. She's got that really yeah, she... cute, like, but not cute. I want. I don't want to say cute in a non-sexy way. It's like cute mm-hmm. and then she's also like grown woman sexy maybe it's the short yeah, hair look her she pulls the short hair off so rachel lee cook and jennifer levewick was also like my crush from those age from yeah from back period. then remember when she was on that boy meets um, world episode where they're yes. in the library and it's like everyone's getting whacked it's like a horror movie so cute she was so freaking hot dude um, like 
yeah, she was she was one of my crushes. Uh, Christina Ritchie, yeah, I know, super uh, cliche. Yeah. No, 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 I um, I don't know if that's cliche. Well, you know, because she was goth, you know, she's goth. I've always been into like the more darker things, so. though. No, dude, Black like, Snake Moan. I mean, you want you want to watch her, dude? Holy shit! Because I here's the thing, like yeah. we grew up with Christina Ricci, so it's less creepy, and I think she's older yeah. than me, and I think she's older than you. Um, but we, I think she's older than me by a couple of years, like three or four years. That's so hot. But like, when they're so close to you in age, you do that creepy fantasy thing where you're like, "You could have been with me." <laughs> No, she. I, <laughs> I could definitely date her. Oh, if she'll only just meet me, she'll just definitely date me. The same age bracket. That's so such psychosis. Um, <laughs> God, dude, I got a chance. How? This is so how you know we need to go therapy. What in our freaking moms yeah. make us believe that these like actresses are gonna like you know, oh if jennifer you know why, Danny? sees me one time she's gonna pull in the because floor. actresses and actors the are romantics. broken people and we know you know as well as i do they need us no i don't know but but yeah. no dude like i don't know what goes on there's a glitch in our brains as men and it's a cocky glitch in our dicks that tells us that no whatever man she's she might be a new you but even a loser thinks that there's there's a there's a little voice in, in every man's head that says, ah, give it a shot. Mm-hmm. And, and and the only difference is there's the men that listen to that voice. And then there's the men that don't listen to that voice. And then there's the men like well, me and you problem, that I think was... sometimes listen and most of the time suppress it. Well, here's the thing. Um, also, just to throw it out there, Jess, uh, Jessica Alba was also another one. Oh, yeah, like, definitely. Her and I was thinking her too. Hand, like in the and. And the last half an hour where yeah, she's, she's like they're at the ru- dance, right? Like in a bikini. Yeah. Oh yeah, and she almost yeah. No, yeah, and then where, she almost like, gets the her face flattened. I just recently That's rewatched right. that because it was on. Uh, That's right. It was on TV. Seth Green's in it. Oh really? It's a great freaking movie. Yeah, the, he's the, one of the friends. The guy from the Mighty Ducks. Yeah, one of the Daredevil, one of the yeah. uh, he was one oh. of the uh, the Bash Brothers was uh, the one who got his head chopped off. Yeah. Um, good Tom DeLonge also comes out in that movie. That is a yeah, good movie. That's, that's that's a anyways, fun movie. Um, Idle Hands. They, anyone they just not. don't make them like they used to. Idle Hands with uh, Devin Devin what's Sawa. Sean, Devin, what was his name? Devin Sawa. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, everybody's everybody's sweetheart. If you were from the fucking nineties, dude, sweetheart, and then he just didn't. Um, doesn't do shit. But yeah. I mean, does he does Stan? He's Stan. What else does he does he have to do? He's Stan. I mean, that's true. It's timeless, right? We're still talking about it. He's getting his yeah. mailbox money. No, but oh, uh, well, I was saying is like all those actresses came out in those movies, like the Teen Bopper movies, where like the loser gets like, the girl of his dream at yeah. the end. So you're like, hey, I'm the loser. That's me. I'm gonna... Hey, mom. Look, That's that me. guy looks like me. She's all, did you take out the garbage? Hey, look, Mom, I'm a man. Yeah, shit, dude. Uh, hey, look- Rachel Lee Cook, Jennifer Love Hewitt, Jessica Alba. Um, if you all listen to this, I'm, I'm or Christina Ritchie. I'm sorry. I'm, don't think I'm a stalker. I'm going to look where you guys are. And don't worry. Like, we're hey, gonna t- I'm going to tag all these go women. Go have coffee with me. But if oh, you do yeah. want to go and have coffee with me, I'm, I'm <laughs> slide through to my DMs. Yeah. yeah. That wasn't creepy. Um, <laughs> the laugh. Yeah, we're not gonna release that out of your own protection. Um, so I think we definitely. What, what, why do we get so side? Oh, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. We didn't get sidetracked. It was it was all relating to what we're talking about. But I was just gonna bring it back. Um, you know, I don't feel bad about what I said. I just think I could have changed yeah. the way I delivered it. But. Yeah. And I mean, there's always buts. And I mean, Coop, again, just to analyze yeah. what. But, you know, just to analyze what you were saying. Um, do you feel you have you already hostile around her before, you know, in any situation, just knowing that. Yeah. I feel like dad, it was just. Girlfriend is there. Does that already puts you on these? Well, so the thing that sucks is I've told him about. 
on several separate occasions, about six or seven times in the last six, seven years. She's toxic. She's alienating you from your family. I don't think it's a good idea. My mom, when one of my mom's last trips to California, literally said that to him in front of her, his brother and his mother. His, I mean, it's yeah. no mystery, man. She's just bad news. Um, I, I can't. But the thing is, is I, it's none of my business who my dad's with, you know, and if he's happy with that person, then I'm happy for him, but I, but I can't, no, but, but here's the thing. And this is how you got to live your life because it's been, and no, 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 I know. But what what I'm going to get at is I'm not, I'm not saying I'm not, I'm not saying I'm wrong, but what I'm saying is what I'm saying, what I need to do. And I'm gonna let you say what you have to say, because I'm sure it's good to hear. But I just wanted to say, mm-hmm. like, no, no, go I'm ahead. I'm exhausted, man. I've been trying to get this to work for almost ten years. Like, I mean, I, I, yeah, I graduated college in 2013, man. It's almost been ten years, and like, he just doesn't get it, you know. So I'm just, I'm, I'm kind of like over it. He's been having hard problems this year, and 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 you know, he kind of told me without saying it, like, you know, I'm. If things are a problem with her and everyone has a problem with her, then I'm I'm pro- I'm pretty much just gonna not come around anymore. And and I say, you know, it's a shame, but you got to do what you got to do. And I mean, I'm not gonna go out of my way to spend time with this yeah. person or um, invite her to my house. I've she's been kicked out of my house twice. Once she made like this racially insensitive comment that pissed me and Steph off maybe five years ago, and we kicked her out of our original place. A year or two goes by, yeah, things fine. Things get a little bit better. I let it go. But it's like things never get apologized for, fixed, dealt with, changed. And and that's why I don't feel bad because I've been dealing with her crap for the better part of eight years. And enough's enough, man. Like she's a bad example to my children. No one in my family likes her. I don't know, dude. I can't. I can't I, if I'm going to be the only one that says something, then that's the way it is. And if he hates me for it, then that's fine. But at least I did my part. Because I know if I was with someone shitty, I would want, even though I probably know I wouldn't listen to them, I would at least want to know that they tried to tell me about it mm-hmm. if I didn't see it. So, but what were you going to say, man? Like, I, I kind of cut you off for sure. Yeah. No, it's just, no, it's cool, man. Because you said, no, nah, fuck that. You off also while you're doing your thing. No, um, just several notes here because I've been, I'm, I'm keeping notes. Number one, like, yeah, I feel like from a non, oh, I'm a little bit biased because you're my boy. You're always going to, I'm going to have your side regardless. Mm -hmm. But like from a third party, um, I feel like, yeah, maybe you might have been a little bit too harsh on her since the get go because you, here you are, um, you know, still figuring out your life, early 20s, and this person is now, you know, replacing your dad's time where it should be replacing your mom's spot with this new, with this other person. <clears throat> Sorry. Yeah. So maybe yeah. you, you maybe they have a little bit, you know, a hostile situation and that's understa- understandable. You right. know, it is what it is. Um, That's one thing I was going to say. Um, But the other thing also is like, you were saying, you made a comment that, you know, it's your dad's life. It's not your business and you shouldn't really like, be involved with it because it's like your dad's personal but no fuck that dude why why shouldn't you be involved with it yeah like that's such a freaking i hate when people like well that's not my business my parents business like well you're that is your parents they're supposed to be guiding you and guarding you yeah and supposed to be setting an example Mm -hmm. um regardless of what your dad has done that dude is still your father. He's still your bloodline. So, yeah. of course, like, that's like, oh, my brother's, oh, one of my brothers, he's a fucking heroin addict. But that's his business. I'm going to tell him, I'm not going to tell him how to live his life because that's his business. No, that's still, that's my brother. Like, yeah, for sure. I'm pretty sure you, like, I'm pretty sure your relationship with your dad is, well, obviously it's not like the best, <laughs> but if something yeah. was to happen to your dad tomorrow, yeah, I, I mean, that's an understatement. But if something was to happen to your dad tomorrow, you're fucking dropping everything to be next to his side, right? Yeah, no, and that well, that's the thing that hurts me is like not to pat myself on the back, but I'm the loyal one. 
like I'm totally yeah. patting myself on the back, but I'm the loyal one of the kids. And uh it's no, like No, and and that's and that's great. That's and it's great. just like you're always burning bridges with me, dude. And I'm just I, I I've kind of like I told him this weekend I said, "You know, I'm tired, man. I'm tired of doing this." You know. And, and yeah. we both kind of said the same thing. Dude. And it, and it, and it, and it's sad, but at the end of the day, man, like I'm not sad about it. And that's guilt that I'm not carrying because he's got grandkids. So now, now it's his job to make an effort yeah. to see him. That's not my job, you know. And if he and if he yeah. doesn't want to fucking make an effort, because I ain't going up there no more. We got treated like, and that was another reason yeah. why I got mad, is we weren't going to eat until three o'clock that day that we left, because her mm-hmm. her son's baby mama was getting off of work then. Like, then she can come and eat and uh, cook a uh, heat up a plate. Wow! 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 Yeah. I've never come from a place where, especially in the Mexican culture or, or, or in Filipino culture or even the black culture, like you show up to a party, it's already there, man. Like you, you get a plate, but, yeah. but they didn't wait to cook. They didn't wait to serve for anybody. They're starting at that time and yeah. you, you're here, you can eat. You don't wait. What kind of weird shit yeah. is that? So I was over it. I'm like, my, your grandkids are here now. Their children, like under the age of four, and we got to wait till three o'clock because homegirl gets out of work. Are you kidding me? I'm like, oh, my bad. I guess we're just the fucking like, in-laws over assuming. here. Like, what the fuck? Crazy. So you're I wasn't too ones, happy about you're that. Not the, you're not the guest in this situation. You're not the guest in that situation. Well, yeah, we drove. We took time off of work. This person clearly didn't because, yeah, it's like, and I'm not saying, and I'm not shitting on people that can't take time off of work. I understand. But what my point is, it's like, I also don't know anyone that would work late and expect everyone to wait for him. I mean, it's just like. That's very selfish. It's just weird, you know? And it's just like, it makes your guests feel like they're not as meaningful as the people you're waiting for. You know? But you know what? That's just her selfish ways. Because she's like, oh, well, before caring about my my partner's children and family i'm gonna wait until my family is taken care of first yeah because so it she- wasn't the baby mama of the of the son of the girlfriend right it was, well, yeah no it was her um, son's so it was her so, grandkid yeah the, but that's my point is she she just wanted that's the to, selfish right oh 100 percent. but she just wanted to flaunt being grandma in front of us like we care and she's just a weird person dude there's people in this world that are very status driven. And it's not about being yeah. a good person. It's about pers- it's it's about looking like you're a good person. That's more important than doing the work. And mm-hmm. she's that kind of person. Yeah. And I hope my dad isn't, but I don't know anymore. And uh I mean, you know, you wake up on time for church, everything for church is ready to go. The yeah. Lord the Lord hey, no one waits on the Lord. But, you know, God forbid your family who comes out of town, you know, wants to spend time with you. You know, we're on the back burner. And, then, hey, look, this ain't no knock yeah. on Jesus. I got no problem with God or anybody like that. Because, once again, it ain't the message of God that's screwed up. It's the people delivering it, and it's the people that preach it every day that, that I have beef with. And I know you know what I'm saying. Yeah. But it's just like, you know, it's just like. Yeah, absolutely. This is why absolutely. people like myself and a lot of my friends aren't aren't huge religious people, man. Because a lot of religion yeah. gets is has been used to bully us, and uh, I don't respond well to shit like that. So, you know, N- neither neither do I. And it's funny you just brought that up because here we are in the first week of June. We 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 are in starting Pride Month. Yep. Um, in solitary solidarity for our LBGTQ plus community, and I was just sharing. I was just talking to this to my coworker yesterday or the day before i was telling him um that you know uh i you know there's a lot of stuff that i don't know about that community mm-hmm. you know and i like to believe i'm a very educated person and stuff but there's still like prior to like maybe four or five maybe three or four years ago i didn't know there was a q and a plus and an A and an I and all these different stuff. Yeah, and I'm like, yeah, me neither. I, I think I'm just, I'm just a plus. Yeah. Like we, 
when I was in college, it was just LBGT, you know, and then they added the Q and then there's the I and the A and now there's a, and there's a plus and, you know, and, and I was telling him, I'm like, we we're talking about it. And he's like, yeah, he's all in the past. I wanted to do something for like pride a month, you know, cause he's all, there is a lot of like of our, um students who are in the closet and like who are or like are, are afraid to ask these questions because then they're going to be like oh what are you what do you carry your fag or something you know yeah for sure um so and and a lot of this time a lot of these times like a lot of oppression towards that community has been done because of religion you yeah. know and 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 you know oh because the lord and the bible says you know fuck the bible fuck the you know i'm not gonna well that's true but once again it isn't Um, the bible like it's people interpreting things and 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 pushing their political agendas and using religion as the as as the tool for that because i don't truly believe this one many religions are homophobic i think it's just the people practicing this shit this one time a very religious person um, they were ha- we were having this conversation in one of my classrooms. This is when I was teaching adults. Yeah. And a very conservative person said, he's like, yeah, I may not agree with your lifestyle. He was telling this to, to a student who identified as a member of the LGBTQ community. He goes, uh-huh. I don't agree with your lifestyle, but I'm not saying you're wrong. He's like, just like Jesus said, hate the sin, but love the sinner. Yeah. And so, so I might not yeah. agree with your lifestyle, but at the end of the day, that's your choice, and I'm I'm gonna I'm a I'm gonna love you as a person as right. it is. And that's the thing about with that, your flaws. And that's and the I thing think that that's we like learned. The one thing that yeah. But but once again, yeah, he, like it, what he's just repeating is labels don't dictate your actions. I mean, exactly. Sometimes they do, but it's only because your actions preceding that. Like if you need proof, like. Yeah, you're a murderer. Yeah, because we saw you kill someone. Okay, but you're not just gonna go call someone a murderer. Yeah. That's never done that. So it's the same thing. Like, yeah. it's like just because you don't get it or identify with it, and that's the way I look at it. Is like I don't need to understand it. I don't need to identify with it. I'm all within people's rights being protected because I want my rights to be protected. And that's at the end of the day, that's all that matters. Exactly. Is I I treat people the way I want to be treated, and you know, that's it. And I think that's all everyone wants. So that's why I'm like, I and got no problem with any of that. Cause th- we're all just trying to do the same shit. You know, I, I have a very, I have family members, um, very right wing family members who are like, you know, complete opposite spectrum when it comes to political views and uh-huh. social views and stuff. Um, I, I still love them. But just don't you don't talk about that right. shit because it's gonna be a fight. Yeah. And this p- particular person um, posted something on Instagram. Uh, it was a meme mm-hmm. about like, oh, we need to teach kids to be man, you know, be manly, you know, blah blah. blah. You know, not teach them. And it's that same meme, like, oh, how real men dress, and they show people from like the 1920s, and then men today, and they put them like wearing like this gender um binding or gender you know blending type of of dressing style and i'm like well in the fucking 1800s they wore wigs you know like actually that was you know manly man you know up to standard no that's a good point late 17th 18th century there you go you are like okay but my my like i'm seeing this and i'm like that's what's wrong with society like we it's this this is why it's hard for the male community to have these type of conversations, not just, you know, when it comes to sexuality or homosexuality, but like with any sort of stigma or any sort of weak, I wouldn't say weakness with any sort of sign that makes you less of a quote unquote man. This is why we don't talk about it. You know, like, Oh, if I, Oh, like, I'm not going to fuck Like, I'm not going to tell my, you know, my parents that I cried because, you know, my girlfriend left me. You know, oh, what, you know, what are you, a girl? You guys don't cry <laughs> I wonder if she left like, you. I'm like, is she a lesbian? Of course, you're, you're, fuck- yeah, she's a fucking, <laughs> you're a fucking pussy, you know, like, like that's, and unfortunately, this is how people, um, think. Well, at least I think people think that way. I, the people who I associate with immediately don't, but, 
you know, this is why we carry such a, a big burden. And there's no surprise where, you know, um, males have a, such like a high rate of suicide and addiction because we suppress our like we were just talking about last week, man, rather than like fixing the problem, we put a bandaid over it. You know, yeah. and I feel like a very bad um, virus in our society is this toxic masculinity ideology you know and yeah um if i ever get lucky enough to have children you know regardless of the gender and how they want to identify themselves like i want them to know that you can they can always come to me and you know talk to me about any situation yeah and you know i might not agree or might not be happy with what they're telling me at the moment but at the end of the day i'm gonna love them i'm not gonna be like oh you need to man up or yeah. Well, you know, you can go to military because you're a girl. You should go back into cook. You know, like that's and, and maybe I'm speaking on my ass because I'm not a parent. You know, but I, I would like to believe that I'd rather do that than like suppress or like sharing these ideologies with like you know very young kids who in the future if they do have some sort of issues, you know, they have they're too they're afraid of like bringing it up. Yeah, no, I definitely. Does that makes sense, Coop. That makes sense. I, I, sometimes confuse myself. I think, um, I think it's becoming more of a thing for us for men to be more honest and, um, but and like you said in daily life, I still witness a lot of that aggro crap. So I, yeah, I don't like it either, man. And then see, that's the thing. I'm caught in the middle because I don't consider myself like. Yeah, I don't know how to word it. When it comes to political, but like I feel like I'm kind of middle. Well, no, not even politically. I mean, as far as like male bravado goes, like I'm not. I wouldn't say I'm. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm definitely not like a macho, but like I'm definitely not like super. You know, I don't know what the other op the opposition of that is, but I'm 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 just a normal dude. Like I'm proud of a man. I'm proud of being a man. I I knock being a dude. I like busting balls about girls driving poorly. I do normal things men do, <laughs> but I don't act on yeah. it. Like, I, you know, we make jokes and we do things, and, and it's no different than men, women saying men suck for this reason. So that's why I, I feel like it's healthy on both sides. I think we need that banter. I think we need to give each other shit. It just needs to be done in an environment where you know yeah. the person, and it's not just some random girl yeah. or random dude where you go up to and you're like, hey, no, like you got to know the people and then it's fine. You know, these are things we need to talk about and normalize instead of it being creepy. And that's, Dude. It, you know, people just need to talk about it more and not be so freaking scared about it. We're, uh, but that's my um, opinion on it. Without saying any names, we, yeah, no. And, and I think you're absolutely correct. And I think you're 100% right. You know, like, you know, we come from from a group of friends and background where we'll bust on each other's balls all day. Yeah, we'll, we'll call you that you're gay, or we'll we'll, we'll make yeah. fun of you and do all those male that toxic male masculinity shit that we are. That I'm out here preaching. Oh, you shouldn't be doing that. But it's only toxic but we do it amongst friends. If so you don't, yeah, exactly. Men. It's only toxic if you don't know the people. That's how I feel. Yeah, I don't think we, it's toxic when we're we were, we're all hanging this. out. No, yeah. and I feel and to bander. We we like right, to bander. Banter. We like yeah. busting each other's balls and whatever, you know. But the moment somebody from the outside of the media, media circle, if they come and start attacking that person with the same thing, oh, we're gonna knock that oh, dude the, out. Everyone's like, going on that person because even that if dude, you're even if you're like, against how, the guy in our circle, like yeah, you don't do that. No, I'm a, I agree with that 100. percent No. I'll even I'll even jump on that guy's uh, neck just, if he's saying what I'm saying. Yeah, absolutely. Like, just stay out of your because stay out of your one eight. Yeah. We're, yeah, stay in your fucking lane, dude. Yeah. No, like this is us joking around with somebody that we that we know and we fucking love. Right. The door, but we will never do that to anybody that no, 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 we exactly. do not know, mm -hmm. like, and especially yeah. somebody who identifies themselves under you know whatever. We want. We're not gonna. Oh, dude, you're gay. Oh, look at this fucking fact. No. Well, We're and that's the thing. We, I don't like, think we've true. ever that's done that. I can speak for myself, definitely, and I, I'm pretty sure it's the same for you, but I don't think we've ever meant that in a literal sense. So, no. Never. It's Never. more like a, a Never. synonym um, for asshole or... Not that that's saying it's right, but, yeah. you know, I could comfortably say I've never used any kind of hate speech in, a, in coming from a place of hate. 
Doesn't make it right, but hey, Anytime that's I, one less check mark. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I final story on this. Um, and this is like the type of people who I am and people I like to associate myself with. We went to a, a show in San Francisco. It was um it was this band called Nortec Collective, and they blend kind of house music with like traditional Mexican regional music, whatever. Uh-huh. So we're we're in San Francisco. We're leaving. One of my friends, he's freaking drunk. He's he's drunk off his fucking mind. Um, and he starts like wandering around. He starts like legit just wanders off. And we're calling him, um, but we're not calling him by his first name. We're calling him by his last name. Uh-huh. I'm not gonna say his last name, but it starts right. with a with a P. It starts with the letter P. So we're calling from him. We're calling for him, like, where the fuck you doing? Where the fuck you going? Hey, so and so, like, whatever. And some guy in front of us turns around and he goes, so what you say? And we're like, oh, no, dude, we're not talking to you. Um, we're calling for a friend. He goes, no, what you call me? I'm um, like, and me and my buddy, we kind of look, my buddy from high school, I'm like, yeah. we kind of look at each other we're like, nah, dude. I'm like, oh, you misunderstood. I'm like, we're not talking about you. We're calling our friend over there. And that's his last name. We're calling him by his last name. And we said the last name. And he goes, oh, and his tone of his voice changed also. He goes, Oh my god, I'm so sorry. He thought so you were just stereotyping him. Saying, yeah, he thought we were calling him something based yeah. on his sexuality. Oh, and and we're like, nah, dude. We were like, nah, dude. We didn't even like notice. We like, we don't care. And we're like, nah, dude. Yeah. We're calling. He's like, oh, I'm sorry. He's like, I'm just, you know, I just came from Mexico, and you know how our culture is over there. And I'm like, yeah. And I go, I'm like, dude, we're in fucking San Francisco, bro. No one fucking cares. And yeah, if you dude. cannot be and if you're afraid of expressing yourself who you are here in San Francisco, then you need to, you, you know, you need to understand you're in the fucking yeah. safe zone here, bro. Well, but it's too. Um, well, you're in the yeah. fucking safe zone here, bro. And he's like, I'm sorry, man. Have a good. I'm like, hey, don't worry, dude. I'm like, nah, don't worry. And we're like, I'm sorry you get, you know, you get that shit before. But I'm like, ah, we don't care. And I'm like, we have, you know, I'm all, have a good night, dude. But he felt so bad for like. You know, because he thought he was just so used to being like this macho. Oh, look at this old, that's, you know, whatever, this that, bag, blah, blah, blah. That's the perfect thing to tie in this theme for this week, though, because he basically um, he jumped the gun, but overreacting. he did. Yeah. He overreacted. But when you find out, it was like, oh, OK, he has a point, too. And, you know, it's just once again, it's like mm-hmm. not defending him, but basically it's like being I've been him where it's like, you know, you're you. You're like not in the situation I explained today, but in others where you know you, you come in a little hot, yeah, you empathize you, with them, and you realize, yeah. okay, you know what? I didn't, I I misjudged the situation, and I am embarrassed, and that's what happened with him. He was like, okay, these guys weren't making fun of me. That was my insecurities, and I ran wild with mm-hmm. it. And then I, everyone's guilty of that. I know I've yeah. I, I can definitely relate to that guy's story. And, you know, and at the same and at the same time, I sympath like. I empathize with the guy because I'm like, mm-hmm. damn, I can only imagine like what's the shit he's been through right. as a as a, a person who identifies in the LBGT community in an area or in a country that isn't so acceptance well, of, and, of that. And you know what kind of balls you know, I'm not, it I'm takes? I'm not saying America. Yeah. No, what are you saying? For for what? Well, no, I was, was going to say, say like, yeah, yeah, America is not perfect. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just going yeah. I'm like, America's not perfect. I understand that everywhere is fucking acceptance of your lifestyles and shit like that. Like, for some reason, they're like, oh, what? So people can openly be gay here. So next we're going to let people openly be pedophiles. Like, whoa, bro. Like, that's two way different spectrums. Yeah, people the, comparing gay situation. people to pedophiles are retarded. So and then they're like, oh, what? Not the Trans same people thing. are going to, you know, guys are going to go into the bathrooms and use the bathrooms with little. I'm like, bro, like. You're, you're yeah, just take a piss. That's like, just that's, the, that's completely the great example of just people that don't know what they're talking about, that live in the dirt, and that just yeah. have the, all these dumb insecurities. Oh, and, just and gather just all those like, people and yeah, throw it, them somewhere. And and we got lucky, dude. Like me and you, could we got lucky that we were raised here in the Bay Area, where it's such a freaking diverse and just a melting pot of like cultures and backgrounds and sexualities and all this stuff yeah where we hopefully our friends who identified 
in, in that community have never experienced, I'm pretty sure they experienced some sort of discrimination before, but like not to the extent where like, you know, boys don't cry, where like they're getting le- legit beat up and yeah. freaking killed over the sexuality. I hope and it not, just sucks because like, yeah, I hope not either. That will kill me. Um, but like I was telling the story to to my brother Juan, like that specific story that I just told him. I'm like, dude, like it sucks because then you think like, damn, how bad did this person have it before? Where now you're in like San Francisco was where, where it's like synonymous for like gay people mm-hmm. and you think you're being called out for your sexuality. Like if I was really doing that, I'm gonna even get my ass beat by everybody in San Francisco if I'm doing yeah. that. You know, so well, I, and it I, just sucks that that person had experienced that and he still doesn't feel like 100% comfortable in the skin. You know, though, kudos to him because, like I was going to say, it takes a hard ass to um, confront someone um, in public because it's, it's, oh, yeah. it's easy to just ignore it. It's not on the long term, but it's easy at the time because you don't want a problem. Mm-hmm. But... It feels so good to kind of be like, you know what? Fuck this, man. What what's what's up, dude? Cause then to you know, like, yeah. what if you guys were assholes? Like it, it, it's good that he was willing to say, you know, like fuck you, or what you know, and like it's nice. Like I yeah. appreciate that. Like it, it, from your guys' standpoint, yeah. you're like, that's totally you read the situation completely wrong. But like I'm like, dang, to the fact that this guy was like, you know what? I might I, maybe in his head he's like they're probably going to beat my ass because maybe he thought you guys were following him. And then he thought, you know what? Fuck this. I'm at least going to fight. Yeah. So God, I've never been put in a situation like that, yeah. but hats, hats off to that guy with that attitude. Cause you know, I mean, I feel like more people need to speak up and, and it's good that he did because, because he spoke up, he found out he yeah. was wrong. He found it. He could now enjoy the rest of his day. Not knowing now, knowing that two people weren't hazing him or making fun of him. And, uh, Hopefully mm-hmm. it'll help him in the future realize that a lot of my problems did happen to me, but the only thing keeping them alive is my mind reliving them all the time in my brain. So yeah. until I can deal with that, which hopefully maybe you guys helped him deal with that, at, at least start to, I think that's the only way we can really move on and help and better ourselves from these situations, you know, of just us like, you know, losing control or just letting our emotions get the best of us. So. One hundred percent. I think that's what we need to do. Yeah. And and it's I think it's a great segue to finish it up. Just you know, you at the moment rather than carrying that what if kind of situation, you let it out. He regrets it maybe, but at you know maybe he looks back in that story now and be like, hey, but you know what? Those guys were they were cool about it. They couldn't easily like you know you know do something different, but there were. They were cool about it and they gave me um you know they they let me know that I was gonna be okay that yeah I'm in the safe place so you know um don't know what ever happened to that dude but I wish him nothing but the best yeah man me too man and and um we're gonna give a couple shout outs here before we head out um I wanted to give a brief shout out to the foot cult boys Brian and Miguel they are out of mm-hmm. the San Antonio uh well we should just say Texas, Arizona, Mexico areas. And uh yeah. basically it's football meets streetwear. They do a lot of really cool um collab types designs with football cultura culture. There you go. You said it sounds better when Danny says it. But they spell foot cult F U T C V L T. Um, yeah, so it's kind of edgy, but um, no, they're really cool. And if you check out the yeah, website, it, which is foot f u t c v t dot com, foot cult. Wait, I didn't put an L in there. C v l t. God, I'm butchering this. If you go to their Instagram, on, baby, listen. Let me show you some of their gear right here. Oh shit, I Danny's got, got some swag. This here is, we go. This is their Halloween one. No, uh, see, see, there you go. See, they do the F U T C V L T. There you go. Foot Colt. Uh huh. And there's their logo. And then uh, they were so kind enough to throw in the uh, 138. Oh, yeah. We are 138. Because I'm a, 
Yeah, because we both love or we all love the Misfits. Yep. And then actually, I got some more stuff of them right here. Oh shit, Danny. Um, swagged yeah, out. This is their. Yeah, look at well, that. That's nice. This is, some, this is their God of Thunder uh, jersey. That's fucking dope. Show the back they got. God of and, Thunder. And oh, dude, you guys see this? You guys. <laughs> You gotta see this one, dude. This is like my favorite one right now. Um, this is their Cure Inspire one. It's called. Ooh. I'm and I'm sorry if I butchered this, Miguel and Brian. If I butchered, this, I'm sorry, but you know I love you guys. I think it's called Blow Flower. Um, but this is their other one again. Oh, it's nice. kind of like purplish, very gothic <clears throat> style, and it's just I like foot, it. Um, football foot, culture. Foot, foot, yeah. <laughs> that's your party. Dude, uh, that's sick. <laughs> but yeah, dude. Yeah, so just to give you guys an idea of what they do, um soccer meets foot um, you know, meets street wear and stuff. They they make really cool stuff and they always out there helping the community out. So definitely check them out, please. I'm gonna plug them on our posts so you guys can follow them that way. But they are foot cult, that is F-U-T-C-V-L-T on Instagram, and if you want to check out the website, that is F-U-T-C-V-L-T dot com. That's football meets streetwear. Get at it. Uh, last plug. Uh, it's not really a plug. Last shout-out is going to be from our friends over at the Hi How Are You Project. They're out of Austin, Texas. We kind of met them up through you, basically. I remember you telling me um, about the, the t- soccer team. God, I feel so shitty about it. Yeah. The soccer team. Yeah, out okay. of... I can explain it again. And yeah, <laughs> and and the reason I'm looking this way is because that's where I have all of my scarves, and I'm wondering if I can see the uh, their soccer scarf. But yeah, um, hi, how are you? Project is in memory of a American musician called Daniel Johnston, who had an album called Hi, How Are You? Um, and they focus. They're out of Austin, Texas, and they focus a lot of mental wellness. And they collaborated with the newest, with a support group of the Austin, Texas uh, soccer team called Los Verdes, the Greens, if you will. Okay. Um, and they collaborated um, with a scarf and they collaborated with a shirt. And that's how I was introduced to that um, to that project. And the moment I saw that it was, they were called Hi, How Are You? And I, like the moment I saw the name and saw their logo, I'm like, okay, I know exactly what they're about and something that's dear and near to to us Mm -hmm. so it was a no-brainer i'm like yeah i don't even like i i think i've been to the outskirts of austin i've never really been to the actual city of austin right um and i'm pretty sure i don't like their soccer team because um you know i i root for san jose but the moment i saw what they stood for i'm like yeah i need to like support them yeah so yeah and and please do you know i um I was kind of new to Daniel Johnston. Uh, Danny literally, I mean, showed him to me maybe a few months ago. And uh, I kind of got on to it a little late, but it's really yeah. interesting. And I dig it because it's kind of weird, like, I don't know. It's weird, like, 60s, 70s era. Like, I don't even know how to explain it, but it reminds me of just... It sounds fucked up, but it reminds me of, like, Charles Manson-ish. But then it's, it's not the same. But then, like, you ever heard any of Charles Manson stuff before he, like, started killing people? (laughs) Yeah. It's just, you know, it's just uh, weird, rocky kind of music that's just different. I think think it's on Amazon. I literally just saw a documentary about, like, his music and how the Beach Boys. Yeah, Dennis Dennis Wilson. Songs reworked a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, Dennis did. He was the drummer was the um, one who was cool yeah. with them. Yeah. But I was going to mm-hmm. say they are not like you said, they're a nonprofit that celebrates Daniel Johnson and men- mental health awareness. Um, I am going to post their um, thing as well on this because it is really important. They um, they have a link tree and they do a thing. Uh, it's a pledge system. Uh, we've taken it. A bunch of others have. It's free. You can donate money, but basically the point of it is, is they're gathering um, pledges on social media to encourage other people to join in on the mission of spreading the word of mental wellness 
And once they get 10,000 pledges, uh, they'll be able to unlock a $10,000 grant from their annual hero sponsor, the American Campus Communities. So this is a big deal. Um, if you do want more information about it, we are going to post it. But I did also include an email if you guys want to reach out. It's info at org. So once again, that's info at org. We are going to do a link, but this is the Hi How Are You Project out of Austin, Texas. You guys have been really awesome, and uh, we are also talking to them about potential, um, I don't know, potential business moves in the future. We will see. Uh, we like working with people that are on the same plane as Hopefully. us, and um, it's great to just meet people. And if all we do is spread the word and talk to people, hey, man, that's all we really want to do anyway. So thanks to uh, Foot Cult that's and true. to the Hi How Are You Project. We appreciate the love, guys. Um, we're going to share that love back to you guys, and hopefully we can keep this relationship going. Until next week, it's been fun with me and Danny, but we will see you guys and be safe. And as usual, be kind. The recording has stopped. I'm going to fix that one day.